Milk. Crate. Marauder. The women are saying is sometimes <laughs> the guys grab their clients <laughs> and go, go around my oval-shaped balls. <laughs> so a lot of companies are now looking at this policy. I didn't realize it, but you go to those strip clubs and you, you know, pay for a room and have a party with yeah, all your clients. Honey. You can write it off of your uh, income tax. Give a fuck if you're an executive. Suck my cock. Oh. Oh. Sounds like uh, Dice really has a lot of good new material. All the way yeah. you go in there. I mean, uh, the, 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 the airbags on your on your vagina. I got to need airbags. I got to tell you something. Uh, uh, about about five six years ago, me and me and Norma were in his apartment hanging out drinking, and uh, we watched the Vegas show of Dices. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and he completely bombs, but we were on the floor rolling around laughing. <laughs> He had this thing where he calls jerking off whack bag. Yeah. He just kept, like, in between every joke, he just keeps, he falls on the ground and goes, whack bag, whack bag, whack bag. <laughs> and he goes, you know, yeah. what? you know what? I thought, That's oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. He goes, and he goes, my cum is chunky style. You could feed a fucking village in Biafra on one of my fucking loads. <laughs> Right now, they're running a pipeline from my balls to Biafra to feed a fucking village. <laughs> now, who didn't like this? I don't know. We, me and Norm were hysterical. It was a Shriners convention. Mm. And, he's, and he's sort of bombing. Yeah, yeah that's what, who, who was the audience? You can't hear the crowd. I thought Dice's racial humor used to be very strong, and then he got afraid to do it. He kind of, like, backed off it. He... Ow. Yeah, I put a clip of some of that racial humor up on the Dice page. Yeah, I, I, and I always just and Dice goes, no, no, no. He goes, I'm, I got to go with the sex stuff. And I, I always liked his racial humor. Uh, here you go. Okay, I'll play a couple of clips. The green quick. one. All right. And then you got these other people, right? I, I, I don't know what they are. They're not white. They're not black. They're like urine colors, you know? <laughs> they walk around with that fucking laundry on their head and shit, you know what I'm saying? See, let me tell you something. I grew up in a neighborhood with black, white, that kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? I could relate to black guys. I could hang out with black guys. I can't hang out with a guy whose name is Achnod. <laughs> I can't see saying to my mom, hey, mom, going to the ballpark. Me and Achnot are going to play a little basketball. You know what I'm saying? They don't know the fucking language. It's unbelievable. I get in a cab, right? I get in a fucking cab. And I say to the guy, get me to the theater of living arts, right? So this guy turns around with that smell. <laughs> they never heard of soap, these fucking people, right? <laughs> with that fucking smell, and he's looking at me. Hey, what are you doing? I'm you fucking geek, huh? Where did they grow you? What rock did you crawl out from under, huh? They should have a sign at the airport that says, Look, if you don't know the language, get the fuck out of the country. <laughs> So he took all that out of his act? I believe I was one yeah. of the guys yelling, out of the country. <laughs> you do all the punchlines. Artie is one of the guys who will join in. <laughs> well, anyway. I was that asshole. They're thinking twice about allowing people to take their clients to strip clubs now. Yeah. Here's another uh, shot over the bow. Ho! Ho over the fucking bow! <laughs> the WP, worried about drawing federal fines, has Whoa. already censored itself. <laughs> What are you, the WB? Fuck the W fucking B. Fuck this you. Uh, new <laughs> Tom Fontana show is supposed to premiere on the oh. WB. It's called The Bedford Diaries. Oh. Yeah, he sounds like a real jerk off. It concerns a group of college students attending a class of college on human students. sexuality. And it concerns college students. And it had already been accepted <laughs> by the WB Standard and Practice uh, Department. But after the FCC decision of last week, yes, it's a chill. They went right back in and they said, you know what? We need to cut a few scenes. One of the scenes showed uh, two girls in a bar kissing on a date, and another of a girl unbuttoning her jeans has been cut out of the show, but they are going to show an uncut version over the Internet. Oh, they're so brave. Hey, you know, I love it, too, because, you know, there's a bunch of fines are going to come down from the radio division, too. And you oh, know yeah. they're going to find me in, in like... 
In absentia. In absentia. Like, I sure. left radio, and they're still going to find me. Do you think and you know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go testify in front of the FCC and say, Leslie Moonves wrote all that material. <laughs> they'll be, they'll be fine in you after you're dead for 10 I years. I know, and I'll be fine forever. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I'm like, um, uh, Who's that rap guy who Tupac. Puffy loved? Yeah, and like Biggie. I'm like Biggie Smalls. Yeah. They'll be finding me after my death. Do you go, think hey, we give... found another nugget. We're going to release it. Do you think they'll give him a pass, though? Do you think the FCC will go, well, he's not here anymore, and they'll say nope, mitigating they still... circumstances? No, they still had a responsibility wow. back then that they ignored what I was doing, supposedly. They right? were backlogged, remember? That's right. <laughs> they were backlogged like oh. my jizz. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Robin, anything else? Big ruling out of the, the Supreme Court yesterday. You know, back in the good old days, if somebody said to you, you can come in and search my house, all you needed was the permission of one person who lived in the house, and you could go in and search it. Boom. If one person gives you permission, but one person objects, the Supreme Court said yesterday, now the police cannot cross the door cell. No, that's I'm not going, going in the house. They got voodoo dolls. <laughs> oh. That's going to change a lot of things for uh, the, our law enforcement friends. And finally this morning in Argentina, not finally, but almost finally, a woman in Argentina has stabbed her husband because he refused to give her sex. He's urine colored. Whoa. The woman was arrested for stabbing her husband because he did not have sex with her. She's 52 years old from Buenos well, Aires. Exactly. She stabbed her husband in the back, but he was not seriously injured, thank goodness. She Why is she police, a homo? Oh. She well. told police she spent oh, the whole day, the whole day trying to get him into bed with her, and he ignored her. She says, I wore a G-string and high heels in the house, and he didn't even notice. Whoa. Whoa. I fucking X me, I'll fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, Sharon Stone's Basic Instinct 2 arrives in movie theaters, I think, this weekend. I say it makes a million dollars. About That's it. Basic Just Instinct. A Just a million. <laughs> <laughs> basic Instinct 2. Uh, oh. Here oh. she says it's easy to be naked. Yeah, it's pretty easy for me to be naked. <laughs> it's not that easy for us to look at it, though. <laughs> you know, I don't have that kind of, a, like, whole thing. Whole? Yeah. I, I just don't, whole. you know, at the same time, it's not like I'm someone who's going to just go be naked. Hey, na honey, let's see your ass. Yeah. Lips. It's I easy for you to be naked. Here's the news flash. It ain't 1911. <laughs> oh. No reason at all. <laughs> and she will do nudity. For a reason. I'm not a person. It's called money. Yeah. Who's a oh. sensationalist for no reason, but if I think it's for something interesting, then it's. Out of curiosity, anybody at this press conference or she just <laughs> talking to herself? I'm echoing because the room is empty. There, there were more it's people listening to Lisa G interview me about the <laughs> nice play in a all right, thank you. And that Sharon Stone, Basic Instinct 2, and moved in theaters this weekend. Andrew Dice Clay is at Governor's. Uh, it's good to have him on today. And Andrew Dice Clay, I think, is sold out, but in case he's not, go see him at Governor's. Yeah, he's with our friends Don Jameson and Jimmy Florentine. That's right. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ho. Ho. Tomorrow. Ho. Oh, okay. Tomatovine.com. Let me just say a couple of quick things here. Tomatovine.com is the way to go if you're looking to really save money. Oh! Hickory dickory duck! A trick oh, is sucking my duck! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the, the other debate that people are having here, I don't know about you, but I still have trouble listening to or watching anything about September 11th. I do. I don't understand oh. that movie they made. Who would go see that? I mean, they eat your kishkas out. Well, they have a trailer running. I mean, and that's a complete surprise. You don't go to the movie expecting to see a trailer about September 11th. And there was one in theaters this past weekend, and some New Yorkers saw it. 
uh, if they went to see the new Spike Lee movie, Inside Man. Yeah, and a lot of people were in the theater screaming, too soon, too soon. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a little bit of the trailer that was played this weekend. No kidding. 2-4. You have the trailer? I have the audio. Oh, you're good. Oh, she gets right in there, huh? Two aircraft hit the World Trade Center. Just left north, the weather was beautiful. There's a We have a plane headed toward the capital. What the hell is wrong out there? May we engage, sir. I am on a plane that has been hijacked. Yes, sir. I got F-16 turning and burning towards Washington. Two planes just hit the World Trade Center. Oh, you know what is going to help us? We have to put some right now. Carnal. Oh, boy. I can't it's even take flight 93. Yeah, uh, I can't even take that on the radio. Uh, I, uh, I bailed. Well, no one watched the cable TV movie Flight 93. I watched it. It got the biggest ratings. It was really well done, uh, but sad. Yeah, I didn't and, uh, watch it. See, I can't watch that stuff. It, you know, I know. I, Still I just, scarred. I'm very scarred. Yes, Robin. I know uh, that you have been concerned about the... Wonder Woman movie, and who will play Wonder Woman? Uh, I don't see them making a good movie there. I think that's going to end up the uh, way Catwoman did with Halle Berry. Really? Yep. Well, it's Joss Whedon who did Buffy the Vampire Slayer on TV. Oh, uh, maybe they got a shot. I don't know. He's pretty good. Yeah. He's, he's playing Wonder Woman. No, he's doing the movie, no. Arnie. And uh, now the name that's being floated is Kate Beckinsale oh. of Underworld. She's out. She's already done action. She's good. All right. Hey, hey Kate Bacon Sale, show me your fucking tail. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Other names that have been attached to this project in the past are Sarah Michelle Gillard. Gillard, yes. Hey, Kate Bacon Sale, I want to come on your face so pale. Oh. 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 Charisma Carpenter. Oh. Who Charisma was also Carpenter. in Buffy the Vam Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Charisma Carpenter, suck on my wood. Oh! oh. <laughs> and Lindsay Lohan. you got an act there, my oh, friend. Oh, I can do the whole thing. Come on. Lindsay Lohan, how about a blow hand? Oh! A blue hand. Oh! A blow a blow hand. hand. I can't all be He's judged. taking some poetic license there. Here's a letter from the email. I was watching The Godfather last night. I was wondering if Artie could reenact the part from the movie when Michael tells Fredo he broke his heart. He kisses <laughs> Fredo and tells him, I know it was you. This is, of course, from Godfather Maybe Artie could kiss yeah. Sal or Richard to reenact it, but go ahead. This is, of course, from Godfather 2. Uh, <laughs> Fredo, come here. What is it, Mike? We're leaving tonight. What do you mean? Hyman Roth's not going to see the new year. What do you mean, Mikey? We're leaving tonight. we got to go tonight. Just come with me. No, no, Mike, i got to go. He goes, come here, Fredo. Come here. I know it was you. What are you talking about? I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. <laughs> and then he kisses him on the lips. And then he runs away. Oh! was on. Godfather 1 and 2 was on. That was at the party, right? They were at that New Year's that was and everything was falling apart. Cuban New Year, yeah. yeah. Cuban New Year. So you have to remember there's dance music in the back. Right, right, right. Corleone, Johnny's Godfather. Now the Italian, the Italian people. people, that's a very religious, sacred, sacred close relationship. And I respect that. Just tell him he should ask me anything else. But this is one favor I can't give him. He never asked the second favor when he didn't refuse the first. Understood? You don't understand. Johnny Fontaine never gets that movie. That part is perfect for him. It'll make, make him, him a big, big star. star. <laughs> I'm going to run him out, out of the business. business. Then let me tell you why. Johnny Fontaine, Fontaine ruined one of the waltzes. It's the national's most valuable projects. For five years, we had her under training, singing lessons, dancing, dancing lessons, lessons, dancing lessons. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on her. I was going to make her a big star. And let me be and even more be frank. Even more frank. Just to show you that I'm, I'm not a hard-hearted hard -hearted man. man. It's, it's not, not all about dollars and cents. She was she beautiful. She was beautiful. She was young. She was innocent. innocent. She was, she was the greatest piece of ass I've ever had. And I've had them all, all over the world. world. <laughs> and then Johnny yeah, Fontaine, Fontaine comes along with his olive oil voice and Guinea charm. <laughs> and she runs off. Well, 
She threw it all away just to make me look ridiculous. <laughs> and a man in my position cannot afford to make you for look ridiculous. Now you get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. And you tell that goomba I ain't no band band leader. Yeah, I heard that story. I heard that story. Thank you for the dinner and a very pleasant evening. Your car will take me to the airport. Maybe your car could take me to the airport. Mr. Corleone is the man who insists on hearing bad news. Mr. Corleone is the man who insists on hearing bad news immediately. Immediately. I fucked up. That's a great scene. Mr. Corleone. Mr. Corleone. And then they leave the horse's head and the greatest oh. the, the greatest visual after the guy screams, they cut the Brando's face and he just goes, oh. <laughs> He goes, you tired, Tom? He goes, I'm all right. I slept on a plane a little bit. <laughs> Robin, what else is in the news? Tom DeLay, who was a big man on Capitol Hill not too long ago. You fucking geek. Uh, he has been maintaining his innocence in a lobbying scandal that undid him and ousted him as House Majority Leader. Well, now he has decided not to continue his run for re-election. Even oh. though he was battling uh, the allegations, he was running for Congress. But I guess it's just gotten to be too much. And he says, after uh, much deliberation and prayer, he and his family have decided to call it quits. Oh. Tom DeLay, what are you, gay? Oh! <laughs> oh, boy. Tom Cruise has uh, Tom <laughs> put out his list of priorities, you know, the top three. Oh. <laughs> First is the baby that he's having with Katie Holmes. Second is his new movie, Mission Impossible 3. He has oh. to promote that, make sure it gets off to a fine start. And then third will be marrying Katie Holmes. Mm. They plan to do that this summer. He says he's not going to let this one get away. Here's some praise for Pharrell. Howard, this is a effing revolution. I bought Sirius because of Bubba. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Then after a month or so of listening to your show, I'm hooked. And then you put this Scott Pharrell guy on. This guy is effing great. Holy mackerel. It's only been a month since I purchased my Sirius, and I listen to a whole lot more radio than TV, and I have TiVo. Love you, brother. Yes. Very good. That's a nice one right there. There's more people who are mad that I don't stay up for The Sopranos so we can talk about it the very <laughs> next Monday, day. That's right. right. Too bad. I need my beauty rest. <laughs> Uh, here's an opinion on the Sopranos episode with the monks. The monks represent heaven, and heaven was mad at Tony Soprano. See, I, I had a feeling that the monks... It seemed odd that monks would be fighting, but that's a good uh, explanation. The guy who was in here who sets up men with Mexican women. I love you, Artie, but the old man was sweet and respectful, very polite, and you were cursing like a scumbag. I love you, Artie, on the show, and it's funny 90% of the time, but get some radar for... Christ's sake, poor man, you well, asshole. If he was Fuck enjoying you. it, if he was offended, I would have stopped. He, right. I think he was offended. Right. I, I don't know. You. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. He was like, you could tell if a guy's offended. He was kind of rolling with it. Thousands of emails about the Ralph Gary argument that I played yesterday. People uh, did not like Ralph's side of this. Uh, you know, Ralph takes a beating from the audience, and uh, they were pro Gary. And they basically say Ralph is a douchebag. He doesn't check his email for the schedule and then whines about not knowing that he has to work. <laughs> See, you're even supposed to tell him when he has to be at work. And then his main critique against Gary is that he didn't check his voicemail when Artie didn't show up. Wow. Here's a guy who thinks Artie's JPEG joke is funny. Howard, don't you get it? Artie didn't understand computers, and then he says, JPEG this guy. I like it. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love it on the replay, and every time Artie says it, I'm in stitches. Okay. So, Artie, keep doing it. No, I understand if it's annoying when I do it. I get that. But I, I got that I wasn't making any sense. Ralph said that Lonnie Anderson on Tori Spelling's new VH1 show is a mess. Ralph doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. She looks great for her age. Ralph thinks any female over 15 years old is a mess. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Robin Quivers with the news. The Grateful Dead band leader Jerry Garcia died a few years ago. People are selling off his stuff, his uh, mementos. But they are wondering in Los Angeles if uh, a fan stole a Jerry Garcia toilet <laughs> or if a tight-fisted thief just swiped 
the toilet because they thought it would be, you know, good to sell to somebody else to make some money. That's a big fan, swiping yeah, his toilet. Uh, yeah, I don't think people steal toilets to make money. I think they knew it was a Jerry Garcia toilet, but uh, then again, who would want that? Well, it was bought by, um, I think, Golden Palace off of eBay. Hmm. Boy, they got money to burn. Oh. He's, uh, he's and been I don't dead know what years. they were going to do with it. I don't know. Hey, but I, anyway, they have not found the toilet, and they're trying to figure it out. I also wanted to talk to you about the Kamora Lee, uh, Russell Simmons divorce. I think they've got a great situation there. Uh, Russell Simmons is handling it like a pro. He says him and his wife are uh, good friends. They work together 16 hours a day. Now it's a question if they want to spend the other couple of hours a day together. And he is dating right now a gorgeous, like, supermodel chick. Best looking chick I ever saw in my uh, life is who he's dating wow. right now. And he says, and he he, says she knows about him. Yeah. He says there was no cheating in the relationship. But he considers cheating... When you do it behind someone's back. Right. Telling a lie, not being truthful about it. So apparently he was dating. Yep. Even though they... Uh, but why announce a divorce when it doesn't seem there's going to be one? Well, we'll see. She says they will never fight over money. And that neither one of them is calling a lawyer at this time. And they're still working together. Can I mention TomatoVine.com, the next generation in phone service? Well, I don't know why you'd bring that up now, but go ahead. All right. First of all, I want to make a plea here for you to listen to me, because you're going to save 80% on your phone bill. Unlimited local and long-distance phone service to the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico for twenty four ninety five a month. Now, that's less than what you're paying taxes on your current phone bill. TomatoVine is a phone service. That uses your high-speed Internet connection to make and receive calls around the world. You can keep your current phone number and use the same phone that you use now. Just add the adapter. Go to tomatovine.com right now to find out how you're going to get unlimited local and long-distance phone service to the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico for twenty four ninety five a month. Plus, you can make international calls for pennies a minute. You could save up to 80% on your phone bill by switching over to tomatovine.com. Tomato Vine gives you tons of free services, enhanced voicemail, caller ID, call waiting, so many more features that your current phone company charges you for, all for free. Sign up now and Tomato Vine will send you your adapter for free. You'll pay no shipping charge. Plus, Tomato Vine will waive the activation fee. That's $130 value. This offer ends on April 30th. Go to tomatovine.com and sign up now. Thank you. Back to Robin. Robin has big brown boobs, big brown boobs, big brown boobs. Big brown boobs, big brown boobs. All right, Robin. I'm reading in uh, some of the <laughs> oh, blurbs oh. today that Sharon Stone, now that her movie comeback, Basic Instinct 2. Oh, has, Sharon uh, Stone, how about taking my bone? And oh. Emily at the box office is thinking of taking up a singing career. She wants to do an album. She has no shame. Like, wouldn't you just <laughs> hang your head in shame if a $70 million production just tanked and she, only made $3.2 million? Is she trying to see how bad she can suck at something? <laughs> oh. oh! Well, you know, I said she oh. did all that pre-publicity because she knew she had a dog on her hands, and now I oh. thought she'd go away and be quiet. But uh, oh. that apparently is not the case. Oh. The other thing I wanted to ask you about with Sharon Stone, when she flew home to uh, California, she flew first class, and she put the nanny and... And uh, the kids in um, back in coach. So what? And I just wondered, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. The, she <laughs> claims, now they're giving her a hard time about it. She claims it was because there were no more first class seats. No, that's bullshit. She just uh, <laughs> didn't want to pay for her two tickets. Sharon Stone sat on my bone <laughs> while she flew home before I knew what I got a rusty trombone. Oh! Wow, listen to you. Artie Dice Clay. They did say the baby wailed a lot while yep. he was in the plane, so I don't think those people in first class would have appreciated <laughs> the that. The baby wailed. While her pussy I nailed. Oh, <laughs> whoa! Oh. oh, Sharon Stone's baby oh. wailed. Sharon Stone's pussy I nailed. Somebody with oh. fifteen grand is happy. I think so. <laughs> All yes. over it, energetic and everything. Thank God the uh, over came in. Rebecca remains famous. Has oh. a new TV show. Yeah. Rebecca Romaine. <laughs> Actually, I should drop the Stamos. It's Rebecca Romaine. I think homos st rhymes with Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Romaine Stamos. Pretty soon won't be famous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because her movies are so damn lame -os. Oh. 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 
She says she doesn't mind playing a klutz on her new show, Pepper Dennis. Number because ten. of all the funny things that they wrote for this character to do. And I mean, ah! from my modeling background and partially from... No! <laughs> Here is why she's doing TV. I wasn't particularly looking for a TV show. I was just looking for good material, whether it be in the film world or the TV world. And I personally hadn't read a character this fun or exciting in the in the film world. So I just I couldn't. She reading. The, <laughs> she reading the many great scripts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pepper Dennis, how about letting me pepper you with my jizz? Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> She does watch local TV news. I really love oh. watching local news wherever I am. Mm. Well, so it's perfect. Now. And for right. different reasons than I used to watch it. I mean, I love the things that they make local newscasters do are <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, I saw this one, this one girl on Good Day LA. They made her do a report from a moving roller coaster. Gun Fox! So what? <laughs> Great what is it? What's, what that's is amazing. That? Gee, that's really amazing. It's a good premise. Oh. And here's Jerry O'Connell, I guess. He goes on these um, junkets with her. He and Rebecca does. haven't set a wedding date yet. We're both pretty busy right now. Wow. <laughs> Lucky. Rebecca's actually more busy than I am. I don't think Rebecca knew what working on an hour-long show entailed. Yes. So weird, you know. I used to see her and John together. Now right, yeah. Now he's yeah, like, a new guy. That's a new dude. <laughs> a little tough. But no, I mean, it's, it's going to happen this year. I just don't know when exactly. I'm on the outs, though. Rebecca's too good to do this show. Well, let's see Let's see how her new show does. Well, you know, when she really needs Dude. it, she'll call in. Yeah. Here's Pepper Dennis. Uh, is the clip from the show. She entices her cameraman. Now, would you rather be some run-of-the-mill camera boy, or do you want to help this team take down the big stories? The ones that'll get us... Sounds like Blue Iris. <laughs> out of that smelly van and into the studio. Yeah. The studio. No. I'm an anchor. Who do you think's going to shoot me? I'm All Pepper Dennis. Every day. I'm getting myself hot. <laughs> this is great. Oh. Oh. All right, thank you. Uh, there's a new service now. You know, uh, you could not download movies once they've been released to DVD for a two-week period. Try down in my load. Oh! <laughs> so now, as of, <laughs> I guess today, you can download the movie once it is released on DVD immediately wow. on the Internet. And the first movie... To get that treatment, Artie. Oh, beer league. No. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Dirty <There> work. <laughs> broke back mountain. Oh. <laughs> Here's a Heath Ledger. Hickory dickory dock. I saw a broke back mountain and sucked some cock. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Oh. Here's Heath Ledger on the love scenes with Jake Gyllenhaal. It needed a fun Look, it's always awkward doing love scenes in movies, whether it's yeah, with it. a guy or with a girl. No, it's really? <laughs> not really. <laughs> what else, Rob? Here's um, Jake Gyllenhaal talking about director Ang oh. Lee. It needed to find that person who was going to make it into... Has he gotten so gay that he has the gay music behind him every time he talks? <laughs> yeah. This is actually from the DVD. You know, they have all that extra stuff. Right, I just erased it. And, uh... Jake do you Gyllenhaal! The clip featuring... <laughs> oh! Jake and Heath? What are we going to do now? Oh, God, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> hey, Stevie boy in Jersey. What's happening, Steve? Hey, what's up, Howard? Hey, now. Uh, I just wanted to say um, uh, I really like the show today. Yeah, I wasn't really busy with a lot of guests, so yes. yeah, we kind of got to hear you relax and chill, and uh, you should do that more often. Yes, yes. I even said that to yes. Gary. I, yes. 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 Trying yes. To yes. Get that. I'm, I'm trying to get that. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, all this, yeah, the Gary it. came into me just a few minutes ago and said, hey, Rob Schneider's going to be around tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How could I not tell Rob to uh, stop by? Right. So, you know, the, the, you know you, you mix in a few guests here and there, but you try to keep it clear enough so that we can uh, just hang out. I have so much uh, material to play for you and talk about. Howard, um, any way I could get tickets to the film festival? Hold the line. I and by you, the man. way, I'm also going to give you a yes. double bonus for being a uh, listener. 
I'm sending you a mouth-watering party from Carson's Barbecue, the best barbecue around. I'm going to send you baby back ribs, pork chops, cheesy potatoes, bread, brownies. You're going to love this package. Oh, yeah, I love the ribs. Yeah, Carson's, call them. 800-GET-RIBS or the web, ribs.com. Hold on, okay? That's Jackie. Right. <laughs> There you go. It's mu it must be the 25th anniversary of 9 to 5. They are celebrating, and here's Dolly Parton, <laughs> You're kidding. They're Jane celebrating. Fonda, and Lily Tomlin singing the 9 to 5 theme. Why, why don't we celebrate, like, the 10-year anniversary of private Because parts? we're idiots. Yeah, we I mean... don't ever make big deals about things. Hey, Dolly Parton, stop your pussy from farting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh No, no, 2-3 is the three of them singing the theme song. Oh, you're making me hot. The new Kevin Federline album, Playing With Fire, will be released in August. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> Kevin Federline, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kevin Federline, that's right. And that's what's happening. Thank you so much, Robin. And uh, thank you to everybody. I see it's 4 past 11 o'clock. We're cutting into precious time for the wrap-up show. I do want to remind you that tonight at 10 o'clock, 9 central, not to miss the premiere of the new real-life series, King of cars that's only on a and e you'll get the ultimate inside look at the ultra competitive world of car sales see what it takes to seal the deal me chop the genius behind the number one car dealership in the nation this cat's only 30 years old but he's already made millions of dollars now, they don't call him the king of cars for nothing now the key to chop success do whatever it takes to stay on top chop chop dresses up as salesman and showgirl outfits paints them blue he even lets his customers dunk them in the water tank. See the evil world of car dealers. The real-life series, King of Cars, premieres tonight at 10 o'clock, 9 central, right after all new episodes of Dog the Bounty Hunter at 9 o'clock, 8 central, only on A&E. That's right. It's King of Cars tonight, 10 o'clock, on A&E. Get ready for King Norris, Saturday, April 29th at the Rail on Main, 350 East Main Street, Bound Brook, New Jersey, 732-748-RAIL, or go to therailonmain.com. Get Vertigo Blues' new song for free at vertigobluemusic.com. Don't miss the stand-up comedy of Sal, the stockbroker, Shuley, and the Reverend Bob Levy, Friday, April 7th, the Dunn Ellen Theater, Dunn Ellen, New Jersey, 732-968-9010 for tickets, and Saturday, April 8th at the Big Kahuna. In Wilmington, Delaware, 302-571-8402 for ticks. See Ronnie Scoresman H100 and the Scores Girls at Tavern on the Green for a 1013 fundraiser for police officer Richard Going, Thursday, April 6th at 7 p.m. For information, call 516-749-4016. And don't forget BenjiBronk.com. Nah, I didn't, I didn't write it down. I wrote something else down. Oh, okay. I didn't think that was that interesting. The interesting one is I heard Ronnie, the limo driver, has a 
an account on MySpace, and he really? scores man on there, and I heard it's really funny, but I can't find it. I can't find his MySpace. What's he, is he writing? What happens on MySpace? Do you write stuff? Like a profile, yeah. And He's then got, what, people call you? Or, yeah. Or email yeah, you? Uh, 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 Ronnie's got some kind of profile. Can you find it on there, Benji? Yeah. Read it to me. What's he got? What are you talking about? Someone told me you have an account go, on MySpace. Just go are to. You, are you off your rocker? You don't? Well, no. someone else might have put it up. See if there's a score. I don't even man. use it. Maybe somebody put something up there, but yeah, I don't know. It's just scores. I don't even just use a freaking computer. Google, I'm worse than just put in the word scores, man. Yeah. And MySpace. Oh, you shut up today, Ray. Uh, you're a, you're a psychopath. Just said it's you're a sick, not you. You're a sick bastard. Let me tell you. Why? There's something wrong with you. Why? You got this crap <laughs> missing up in your head. What's your problem? Why? What's my problem? Dude, you had to see what's going on out there with him. What did he do? With dice and everything, trying to kiss him. He's That's not of, true. He's out of his mind. That's not, That's not true. He was, You're making tell, that up, Ronnie. Don't, you don't, don't, you're looking. making that up, Ronnie. And don't come in here and tell Howard Stuck to get me in trouble, because I will not take it. <laughs> did you try, I thought you tried to kiss dice. Yeah, I did. He did. He's lucky he didn't get punched out. I'm telling you, he was ready to punch him out. <laughs> That's what we were going for. <laughs> trying to make out with dice. <sighs> well, if I had been a little skinnier, I might have been successful. <laughs> Honestly, he's right, because someone told me that, uh, like, I have ten pages on MySpace or something. Oh, okay. People just put shit up. But if you put it, just put it in Google, stores men in MySpace, it'll come up. All right, and what does it say? Uh, well, here's a blog. It's about Robin. Let's see. Yes, Robin is important. Where's my car? Hey, I've been <laughs> drinking since I dropped you off. Uh, so oh, wait, that's Google... a comment. Wait, that's oh, I see. So I thought it was his real account. I forget he lost his oh, mind. Oh, no, no, here's his blog. I found it. All right, it's okay, Benji. I work as a security guard. I, I said it's Okay. okay. No, no one wants I, to hear you read. I wonder who he wants to meet. Fans of the show and girls who'd like to work at scores. <laughs> right. <laughs> what so is somebody it? Somebody's stolen Ronnie's identity. What is it? Got the engineer. My favorite Howard Stern moment is when Dice came by. Okay, because you never knew what you were gonna get when Dice Clay walked into the studio. Hey, you know. So um, I just loved it every time he came by. Check him out. <laughs> April 20th, 1992. Look who it is. Look who just dropped in unannounced. Jackie. Oh, Jackie, what's going on? Who is that, Robin? Oh, it's the Dice Man. Yeah, that's right, the Dice Man. <laughs> I didn't know you were in town. He's always in town. No, I just, I just came off tour like six hours ago. Is that right? He just dropped That's right in. That's why I didn't guess the Dice Man. Yet. Yep, there he is, Andrew Dice Clay. I was trying to think of who was here. Should I bring up this thing we were reading about uh, Arsenio Hall? Yeah. All right. Let I me, forgot all about that. Let me bring something get me up here. started, huh? Uh, do me a favor. Let me take a break. You don't like him, do you, Quivers? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And, you know, I was uh, going to ask you. Let's face it. You and Sam Kinison were rivals. I mean, in the sense, I know you never felt a rivalry with him, and you always kind of felt uh, the whole thing was ridiculous. Yeah, but I did. Sam was really angry with you. You know, he was a great comic, right? And uh, but we weren't friends. But I felt terrible that you know that he's gone now, and right. and you know we're all gonna miss him, right? You know, because it had to be kind of weird. Because uh, you know what? It's really funny when Sam died. I thought of Dice. Yeah, so did I. Because every time Sam was in here before Dice came on the scene, uh, Sam was obsessing on Goldthwait. That was the big thing with him. Golf yeah. weight, golf weight, golf weight. Every minute with golf weight. And then he, just, then he wanted to destroy me. Yeah, then he went after you. But that's all right. That was his thing, you know. But and, uh, I did say this on the air. I don't know if you know this. I, I said to Sam once, um, you know, what, what, are you so, what are you with this dice thing for? You guys have very different acts, and it's, a, it's a, you know, why, why are you so upset by him? He says, well, tell you the truth, I'm really not upset with him. I'm just kind of jealous because he did steal a lot of my thunder. I was the one big shock comic, and then he, when he came on the scene, he stole a lot of my thunder. And, uh, you know, there's a jealousy there. So, I mean... You know, that was a pretty honest revelation, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he was great. And I'll tell you the truth, you know, you know, even with all the bashing, right. you know, that we did to each other, I mean, I mean, for a while I let him just go on and on, and then I gave it back a little, but he was great, and right. I'm not going to, you know, say anything bad. I mean, we even used to listen to his albums on the bus, on the tour bus. Right. Which, if he knew it, he'd say, no way. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he was a certain way, and I'm a certain way, and, you know, I felt bad. Right. You know, that's it. Now, let's get back to this. We were reading this in the... Uh, Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. So we're reading the... A lot of news was made because Arsenio did an interview where he said he's going to kick Jay Leno's ass. Oh, yeah. Right? I saw it. Yeah. He's a you know, big shot now. He's going to kick Jay Leno's ass. And uh, what's that all about anyway? But then I'm reading through the thing, and he says... They say to him, are there any guests you won't have on? 
So he says, I won't have on Andrew Dice Clay. Now, I, I found this to be quite bizarre because I always noticed whenever he had rating sweeps going, this uh, Arsenio, he used to call you to come do all the, the show. All the time. All the time to do all your show. All the time. But now, all of a sudden, he won't have you on. Now, what the hell is that all about? Well, you know, Arsenio is basically, you know, you know, am I allowed to say kiss ass on the show? Right, you could say kiss ass. You know sure. what I mean? He's a he's a kiss ass, and he goes with the wind. You know, he's trying to please like, uh, you know, like all the gay people now. You know, right? So uh, he's trying to keep his ratings up. I mean, that's why he's doing all the press now. Yeah, but my point. I mean, is... you don't see Jay Leno doing all the press, right? You know, what I mean, Jay Leno ain't afraid, right? You know, Arsenio's got to go on every magazine cover. You know, right. you know, you know. But this is the first time that I think they did put a horse on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, true. I he mean, does look like a horse. You've referred to him as the Black Mr. Ed. Well, right? I got that from you. You told me he was the Black yeah. But Mr. since Ed. you did the joke, I'm going to give you the credit. <laughs> All right, for good. <laughs> there you go. You know, he's also known as Horseshoe Head around the stable. You know that. You call him Horseshoe Head. Well, I call him a lot of things. Right. You know? yeah. I mean, look at the. Guy. No, but He's got ears like pot stickers. Yeah, but wait a second. You met Arsenio years ago, right? Yeah. Before he became this uh, big talk show host. Yeah. You met him in the comedy club. Yeah. All right. You met this guy. You were friendly with him, I assume. Well, you know, it was a, you know, it was a, we didn't really like, you know, we've had a few moments where we like hung out. But why does he have to attack Dice? I mean, if you're going to say that Dice is not politically correct, then how does he rationalize being Eddie Murphy's best friend and having Eddie Murphy on? Well, you I mean, the same thing you make jokes about is the same thing that, uh... Well, you see, Eddie takes no prisoners. <laughs> yeah, Eddie doesn't... Uh, Eddie, well, uh, you see, that's the thing. You see, Arsenio said in that article that he didn't like my kind of material. Right. Or whatever he said about the cripples, you know, this and that. I see. Like, I'm not allowed to talk about these things. Right. You know, that's what gets me mad, that people will actually, you know, like, think these things when they see 90 handicapped parking spots, you know, but if I say it as a joke just to, like, loosen it up... Are you, you annoyed know, by the fact that there's so many of these handicapped parking spots? I know I am. Well, well, you know, I park in them anyway. I don't care. You do? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I pull right in. You I pull park right sideways. In, you don't care. I take three spots up. Really? <laughs> and you pull... Yeah, in. I mean, they ain't showing, you know what I mean? Maybe one guy with a limp. Right. You know, a and lot then of the security people... guards come over there like, oh, you can't park there. This is for the handicapped, and I'm looking at them like... You saying there's nothing wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, hey. wrong with you? I hear you. Right. I'll suck out your eyeballs and stuff you in a vent over there. <laughs> so, but the thing is, how can he say something like this about me? Would you take that cigarette out of your mouth? I can't. <laughs> can't. I can't. You hear me now? <laughs> he is handicapped. You know, but you know, but then again, maybe he hasn't heard his boss Eddie Murphy's material, which is similar to mine, right? Right. right. Because Arsenio got his head buried so far up his boss Eddie's ass that his ears are stuck to his spleen. Right. <laughs> but then again, Eddie is his boss. Right. Which everybody knows. And when your boss tells you to kiss his ass, you do it. I mean, that's the only reason that uh, Arsenio's on the air. But of all... Beca because, let's face it, he's an ass-kissing fool who thinks he's very important. But in reality, Howard... Yes. What he is is just a head who is constantly stuck in the ass of his boss, Eddie Murphy's ass. Right. He's just Eddie's ass-licking, hypocritical pet. Right. Well, you know something? This is something I've said for years. And I used to say to Dice when he'd go on that Arsenio show. I well, said, you told Dice not to do it. I you certainly did. You always advised him to stay but away from Arsenio. Did I not you, say not to go on Arsenio? You said it. All right. Fair, all right. What should I do? Take me to prison with right. this. Right? Okay, yeah. I mean, how can Arsenio say these things about me? You know, his boss, Eddie Murphy, yes. came on the show mm -hmm. when, when I happened to do the show a few years ago, one of the first shots. Right. And he came on the show to, like, validate what I do. Right, right. Right? He's sitting there going, yeah, I'm going to see Dice, who at that time was play I was playing the Universal Amphitheater. Right. And Arsenio's looking at him like, uh, no way, you won't be, like, going down there. And, you know, you know the way Arsenio talked. Is that Arsenio? impression? Yeah, and his, yeah go ahead. and his boss, Eddie Murphy, looks over and says something like, you know, hey, ass kisser, was I talking to you? Right. I think Dice is funny. All right. Now go, now go hook yourself up to the buggy, put the bridle over your head, and drop me home. <laughs> now, wait a second, Dice. Well, he's You're, a horse. You, are, you have got to be a little bit miffed over Arsenio Hall, because... I, I don't think you, you, you have been defended miffed. him? Because you've befriended you've, him? You've, you've, hey, let me tell you something. When, I, I got nothing against him personally. I mean, oh, he's the best on. talk show host to ever Ooh. look through a bridle. Oh, through a bridle. Okay, go ahead. You know what they should do? They, they should put a blanket over his gums and walk him around the winter circle. <laughs> yeah. But, but I understand when you wake up one day, you're in the barn, your oats aren't ready. Right. You know what I mean? It gets you cranky. It perturbs you. Right. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I knew that guy would burn you. 
In other words, out of all of the guests in the world that he won't have on, he's yeah, going to die. Yeah, over the wide spectrum. You know why? Because you become this, uh, for the politically correct, you become this punching bag. Am I correct? Don't you yes. see that? Yeah, I've been you destroyed have. by everybody. No, you know what I'm saying. And you know? I destroy back. Well, it's just very, very frightening. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this guy, he's so taken with himself. He's lost all concept of reality. Were you shocked to see that in the magazine? Yeah, I was. You were? I was. You didn't know you were persona yeah. non grata on the show, did you? No. What does that mean? Well, they, you know, it means that you're not allowed back yeah. on the you program. Won't be a guest. I care. <laughs> now, it said in the article you called Arsenio Hall up on the phone and asked if you could come on the show, and no. he said no. Number one, true? I never did that. You never did that? Yeah, I never called him. You never called him? No. He would call me and ask you to come this on the show. This guy's out of his mind. Right. I mean, and people should really not. This guy stood in the back of the comedy store after he cut his hair like a chafing dish. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's telling me, you know why I do this, Dice? Because when people see it on TV, it's going to start a trend. And I'm looking oh, at man. him like that's a trend. We tots are doing that hairdo for years. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how you picked up on it? So, in other words, he's so full of himself that he feels if he gets a new hairdo, the whole country will move in uh, sync and get he a hairdo. He thinks like everything that. he does. The only thing that the uh, horses listen to him. That's it. Well, let me tell you something. He will. He goes fall. to the dentist. The dentist is afraid he's going to get hoof and mouth disease. <laughs> now, well, I'll tell you something. He said he's got to be careful what he presents to America. One could only hopefully be, uh, hopefully. Someday he'll uh, break his leg and they'll shoot him like a horse. <laughs> you know what you ought to do in order to... Famous Amos has more to say than this guy. Well, you know what you ought to do? First of all, he's a horrible stand-up comedian, Arsenio. He's not a comic no more. He's not. He used to be a comic. Right. You know, he used to tell jokes anyway. Yeah, right. You know, now he's like just one long commercial in between like news stations. Well, let me tell you something. But wait a minute. Didn't you guys read the article? He says, I can't, I can't think of one joke that I have told on this show that wasn't handwritten. Wait, let me say, I, 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 I remember that quote. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what he really meant to say is that while one hand, I, I love that, that, that a joke wasn't written that he didn't, like, have a hand in. Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, that's not a comic. I, I think what he really meant is that he had a hand on the table that his 45 writers were working on. <laughs> yeah, right. While his other hand was trying to pull his head out of Eddie Murphy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well... That's certainly uh, interesting. Now, now you have you uh, spent time with this guy? I mean, have you ever spent time talking to him off the air? And uh, well, you know, when you talk to him, it's like talking to another person. Now, really, I mean, he's very taken with himself. Right, horseshoe head. Yeah, I you mean, there were, were other him? quotes. You know, a quote I love. He goes, uh, uh, "Wait, this is a good one. Yeah. This is a good one." All right. You know, like number one, he comes on and he was talking about like throughout like his first year. Yeah. You know, that he read in one place that he was too black. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Now, I think what he should have done is get his head out of his boss Eddie's ass before right. Eddie hit the toilet. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're saying and, that the reason he was... In other words, people were complaining that Arsenio was too black on the air, and you're saying because... No, this is what he was saying, like yeah. one of his quotes. And then he continued to say that Spike Lee... Yeah. You know, in another place, said he was an Uncle Tom. Right. Now, the only thing that, that gets me crazy with that is that Spike said it before me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because when Spike get down with the truth, you know, because the Spike is going to diss a homeboy, he's cold. <laughs> That's wow. right. You know, Dice. Because I'm black. You know Dice, that. No, seriously, you uh, speak. I got a lot of black in me. You believe speak me. the uh, black jive talk. Um, did you just hear That's that? That's right. <laughs> did you hear because that? I am a black man. Would you do that Spike Lee impression again, please, yeah. if you don't mind? With Spike get down with the truth. Because when Spike is going to get the homeboy, he be cold. Well, there you That's go. That's right. It's like having a black guy in the room with you. Uh, close your <laughs> eyes. The blacks love me, believe me. Let me close my eyes and hear that again. The blacks call me D Money. Really? I can see you're really worked up. Oh, uh, yeah. I can see you. Got I'm not finished with him. You're not. I even got a closing statement when we're done with All him. All right, you would like to make a closing statement. <laughs> All right. But we're not done with him yet. I, I don't think you're pronouncing his name right. What is his name? Asinio. Asinio. Asinio? Yeah. Asinio. I love the beginning of a show. You know, the beginning of a show when yeah. the announcer comes on. Right. And he got, comes on, he's like, uh, oh, through the streets of Hollywood and the hills of uh, the Hollywood Hills, it's the Oreo Hall Show. Oh, my goodness. Starring Mr. Big Stuff himself, and here he comes. It's Oreo. And what does he do? Right. Ruff. Ruff, ruff. I mean, where does this guy have the unmitigated goal yeah. to come against a guy like Jay Leno? Now, let me tell you something about Jay Jay's Leno. Jay's a comic. Jay, Jay 
despises me. He hates my guts. Right. He thinks I'm the worst comic to ever hit Earth. Right. And I respect him for that. Right. Right. But the one thing he never did is use me for ratings, you know? Right. But the one thing I know about Jay, when you turn on, you know, his show, I did a tribute to him on my new album, 42 Long, by the way. Which right. I know you rip him a new a-hole. But, yeah, yeah. But, but that's what we do. Right. But he never told me to come on his show to build his ratings. In other words, but, you're saying Jay never used you. He's not a hypocrite. Right. You know he what says I mean? he hated you. And yeah, that he was despises it. me. And I can't blame him. Ars I despise Ars me. Arsenio used you in rating sweep to get huge that's ratings. Right. And now, all of a sudden, he hates you. But in the meantime, yes. that big-headed bastard, Jay Leno, comes out every night. Right. Got a solid monologues of jokes. Right. Mono what is it? Monologue. 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 He's got a solid monologue of jokes. <laughs> yes. Everything right on the <laughs> right. money. I mean, this working. guy goes into concert. He could do two hours. He draws ah, people. Right. And Arsenio comes out, and he barks. Right. Ruff, ruff, ruff. He's the barking horse. Ruff. Oh, man. When Jay Leno falls, people go, Chimber! <laughs> yeah. So, in other words, you respect Jay because he always was up front with you. Yeah. And Arsenio lied to your face. Arsenio is a liar. Arsenio's a liar. But, you know, that's not right, Robin, when at least... I that's what I get for going on a horse's show. You call him the horse? Yeah, when when he does a really good show, his trainer like gives him an extra lump of sugar. Right. You know what I'm I saying? I understand what you're saying. I wouldn't do that show. I did the show with him once Let when he was working you, I, for the Fox Network. I created more history in one year than this guy will create in his whole life. Yeah, that's Unless right. Unless he wins the Derby in a few weeks. Oh! <laughs> All right, listen here, Dice. That's right, Oreo. Are you listening to me, Oreo? Well, now, when you say uh, Oreo, you mean that he... Uh, acts like, like a real, like, Uncle Tom. He's an Uncle Tom. Yeah. Now, that's a very controversial thing for you to say. That uh, our Everybody in. knows it. Look at him. I see. Well, there you go. What do you think of him, Quivers? Or you don't want to be involved in this? Well, oh, Robin has I've stayed I've always her said I don't like Arsenio. I think he is the new Sammy. Right. <laughs> He's like a Sammy. <laughs> yeah, but Sammy was a talented guy. Well, Sammy you know. was talented. You know, I don't know what's worse, his teeth or his nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? You evidently said the right thing. He's, he's on to something else. <laughs> I don't know what's worse with Arsenio, his teeth or his nose. Is he the front? His teeth. By a nose. Oh! <laughs> is he the front of the horse or the back of the horse? He's everything of a horse. All right. You know, if I got to keep my car in the shade, I park it under his ass. All right, let me take a break here. Obviously, this is a very big feud going on between you and Arsenio. This is a, a this is one of the great you show. Hit on I'm taking happens. him down. I I, I am taking him down. You are. That's oh, it. Yeah. He's over. He's done. When I get done with him, he's going to wish to God he never even met me. Well, there it is. Well, then he'll have to make up with you. That's right. I don't want to make up. <laughs> Will you ever make up with hey, him? Let me tell you something. If he came crawling back let, to you, let me tell you something. Would you make up with him? No, let me tell no, you, you something about talk show hosts. Okay, right? go ahead. When I made it big, right? Go ahead. When you hit the big time. Yeah, when I hit the big time. Right. No talk show host wanted to have me on. Would David Letterman have you on? No. Would Johnny Carson? No. Would, uh, let me ask you this. Would Nobody wants me on that show. Don't you understand it? So I come to Arsenio. You know why? Why? Because he's a jerk off. Right. That's why. Oh, okay. He is a jerk-off. So you went to him, you knew he was I'm a jerk I'm sorry I called Letterman a jerk-off, because he's the jerk-off. I see. That right. jerk-off. All right, Dice. You know, he wants to audition for Hee Haw. Arsenio. Arsenio? To be the horse. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, he didn't get that, but he did get that part in The Godfather. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, that was him. Well, anyway. They didn't even have to use makeup. Oh! In case you're just tuning in, Dice came in this morning. I just happened to ask him about uh, Arsenio. And he has uh, gone completely off the uh, off the wall here. Yeah, he's totally off base. I mean, he buries himself in articles, basically. I see. And but uh, you know, years from now, did you ever see him on the Oprah show? He was on the Oprah show, and it was, uh, I ever saw two people kiss it, each other's it, ass. What a it's love just, fest! What a love but fest! You, you know what the thing is? He talks about you know not having that like black attitude, right? You know what I mean? And when he comes out on his show, yeah, you know, he's like, well, today in New York City, right? And then the minute he's on Oprah, he's like, yeah, well, I remember when we and Mama used to have rent parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody get together, put the rent together. Whoever had the most rent, we get that money paid that week. You're saying that he's one way on some shows and yeah. another way on another show? Yeah. I see what you're saying. He'll kiss whatever ass is in front of him. Right. You know he's what I mean? He's a big ass kissing horse face. Yeah, All exactly. Right. But years from now, when he's not so famous, believe me, believe me, he'll probably like uh, do some kind of syrup commercial. You know what I mean? Right, right. They'll throw him in overalls, put a straw hat on him. <laughs> what would They'll you call like? call it like Oreo's uh, sticky stuff. I see. Well, man, you are obviously very, very angry with him. I can see it. I can see it in your face. You're completely red in the face. Well, you know, it just gets me, you know, that, that he thinks it's all right that his boss, Eddie Murphy, could curse all day. Right. You know, because he's black. Right. You know, 
but I'm the racist. Well, do you think it's because he's black or because it's his friend? Well, well, it, it, uh, well he's his black friend. I see. You know, I mean, I'm not putting Eddie down. I dig Eddie. I know you, you like know, Eddie. Eddie's a talented guy. He does right. movies. He does concerts. He right. sings. You know, he does everything. Right. You know, this guy don't tell jokes, Arsenio. Right. He, he don't sing. Right. He, he don't do nothing. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I just don't understand why he would. And he would pisses say, on every white guest. He he always pissed on me. You feel it's a racial thing? Yeah, definitely. You feel if you were black, he would definitely, be treated better. Definitely, definitely. When I watched him on the MTV Awards, yes, right. Any white performer that he had come out, he would be like, yeah, "Well, here's uh, Joe Blow." Right. But the minute like a black performer, like at the end when Prince came on, he goes, "Yeah, now this what we be waiting for. Right. This what the night be all about. I see. This is what it is. Right. Well, that's why he's being replaced. I'm sure. Is he being replaced? Yes. This. Oh, yeah, he says he'll never kiss Dick Clark's ass again. <laughs> really? Hey, he's only got one head he could stick in one ass at a time. Yeah. And right now, yeah. it's stuck up Eddie Murphy's <laughs> ass. All right. So, in other words, he can't kiss Dick Clark's ass. Do you think it's possible for Arsenio to kiss two or three asses at the same time? Well, it's not that he kisses it. He buries his head so far up his ass that I'll tell you the truth. If Eddie makes a quick left turn, he's going to break his nose. <laughs> oh, but uh, you're kidding me. I'm, I'm very surprised. You're yeah. saying that. What is it, Scott? I'm sorry, Howard. you got to bring Dice's mic down. You're, you're overmodulating. We're having problems. So Get out of here. Get out of here, you Get imbecile. Here. You're an idiot. Who is Get this out of here. You nut. I'll Don't. make a new doorway with him. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who is that guy? Ah, that's Scott the Engineer. I never met him before. Uh, now like you've you met him. You brought me all the way down now. Now I can't even hear myself. Let me see. No. I know. Yeah, but then you're breaking you're blacking up. blacking me out. Well, they Get can't it? hear you. Good guy, say something now. Out. Hello? <laughs> How's that? Hello. Very clear. <laughs> no, can you hear me now? I hear you. Right. I hear what you. about when I yell? Can you hear that? Is that good engineer? How is that, Scott? <laughs> Scott, is that good? You know what it is? I, I, I feel the fierceness in your voice. The, the quality. Well, you know me. Yeah. You know, I'm a nice guy. Right, you are. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, you I'll tell you something. Crazy. Let me ask you a question because you brought this up. Arsenio's head is very huge, right? Do you think Eddie's ass is sore because his head, because Arsenio's head is bigger than most people? What is it, Scott? Is that okay? That's fine. Oh, that's fine? All right, now get out of here. Don't ever interrupt you my show. A transmitter. So, anyway, I was telling you that Arsenio's been replaced. On the MTV Awards, he will not be hosting it this year. Now, is that because he quit or because uh, he... Oh, they just replaced him. Really? Now, I'm who... sure he I'm wanted to do it. I heard he was disappointed. Who will be the new host? I think it's Dana Carvey. No. Well, that I understand. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Well, Dana's a talented guy. Really? Yeah, I mean, Dana does impressions. Dana's funny. Right. Dana does hit movies. You feel at least he's got some talent. I love Dana Carvey. You do? Oh, yeah. I see. I'm well, not kidding right. about that. Right? I, I, it's, you sound sincere. No, I'm serious. I, no, I, I know you're serious. I can see that. And Jackie's see... the new Polish king, right? <laughs> what is that thing with the Polish thing? I don't know. Come on, Jackie. Lay it out. What? He read the article in here. Yeah, but I didn't hear it. I just heard, like, you're the king no, of the Poles. The, there's a Polish newsletter that uh, printed a front-page front uh, letter that said I was a super bigot. <laughs> yeah, so what's wrong with that? <laughs> Selling out my shows. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Dice doesn't worry about that. That's guy, the one, it? you know, that's the one bunch of people that never came after me. Who's that? The Poles? Those dumb hey, Polacks. Those dumb on. Polacks? They they're never came. <laughs> no, they're, they're not really dumb, are they? <laughs> Give me one Polish joke. All right, Jackie, tell us your worst Polish joke. Come on, come on, Go ahead. come on, talk, talk. Don't be intimidated. Come on, babe, come on, babe, babe, babe. Go ahead. <laughs> Who are you doing, in a Belzer impression now? Yeah, I'm a big fan of his. Oh. I'm a big fan of <laughs> You like Belzer now? I always like one ball. <laughs> one ball, you call it? Is that your name for him, one ball? One ball Belzer. One ball Belzer. Yeah, look at all the press I gave him on the show that time. That's right. I did like an hour on him. That's right. Hey, he's doing good now. I remember when you called in and you yelled at Belzer. Oh, remember that yeah, phone but, call? Yeah, but, you know, yeah. what am I, what am I going to uh, stroke the guy? He needs help. Hey, hey, Fred, you got that tape? Maybe we should refresh people's memories, Robin. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, hey, Fred, you got that? Fred's gone. Fred's come on, not here come on. Fred's not here again. <laughs> we're into destroying Arsenio. Leave Belzer alone. All right, now, where were you? Go ahead, do your Polish joke, Jackie. Yeah, go ahead. All right, come on. Now, Jackie's having some trouble with the Polish community. And uh, let me this, hear your this worst. Should help. This is your worst Polish joke. Come on. Well, not the worst. This is a good one. A Polish girl is drunk and she's driving down the street swerving, so a cop pulls her over. It says license and registration, so she hands him her license and registration. He says, you're Polish, eh? And he starts pulling down his zipper. She says, oh, no, not another breathalyzer test. 
<laughs> and then what happened? Shut up, man. No. I laugh at every stupid thing you say. 45 friggin' horse head jokes is what you can come up with, and you can't laugh at my joke. Well, you know, I was you just trying to figure things. it out. Well, there's another uh, show I should have been pulled. No, I figured if I fight right, the dice, I get more. some press. All right, do one more. Do, do one, one more. Do a good on. one, Jackie. You got I better ones I thought it was that. funny. I was dying inside. I think inside. it was your delivery, Jackie. <laughs> I was dying. No, my insides were turning. I was going crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Do a good one, You know, Jackie. I'm that type. I don't like laugh out. Jackie, do a good Polish wow. joke. Come on. Your polls are after All right, you. come on. One more. Fool me once, fool me twice. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that I get. I'm not laughing at another thing you say. Uh, come on, I'm just going for it. You know, me and Jackie always had a good relationship. <laughs> we had. Uh-oh. Oh, no, we still do. Come on. All right, are we going to get to the news now? What do you mean, the news? And we're gonna do, Robin's going to read the news, and we're going to comment on it. Really? What about the closing statement? You want to make a closing statement? You want to make that it? now or All later? Right. You want to do yeah, that now? Because I want Arsenio to have a good day. Uh, listen, I didn't know you were coming by, so why don't you make a closing statement about Arsenio? Then Robin and I and you will do the news, and then maybe we'll take some phone calls before we get out of here. All right. All right, go ahead. Is my coffee ready? Yes, sir. Can we have some uh, some music? I got to right. do this right. Fred, you got some music for Dice yes. for Is his Fred closing right? statement? Come on, Freddie. Uh, Your Honor, Jackie Motling, Fred Norris, and Quiver. <laughs> Arsenio Hall. All right, go ahead. <laughs> you, who has the nerve to call me a racist, when on my last HBO special, what I talked about is how racism is bad and how instead of building barriers, we should break them down. You, Arsenio, who doesn't like material on women, after I saw you personally drag a girlfriend of yours out of the comedy store by her hair and slap her around in front of other comics. What? You, Arsenio, who had girls on from the show Oba Oba and for a week straight showed this one chick with a big fat ass and all you talked about is how you got to get in there and get your balls wet. That's right, you Arsenio, who said it was a mistake to have me on your show. But you did that and made that mistake six times, Arsenio. How dumb could you be? But isn't it funny that every time you did it, your ratings went up and you always did it during rating sweep week? You, who constantly makes fun of white people, who, by the way, are the only ones watching you because I got a lot of black fans. And I'll tell you something about your people, Arsenio. The black people, they are completely embarrassed by you. You're you're an alien to them. They look into your eyes. It's like looking into E.T. They just hate you. That's right. You. You ass-kissing, phony, hypocritical, anti-Semitic, racist, male chauvinist trying to bang any actress that comes on your show. Big-headed, self-centered, egotistical, big, fat-ass, packaged Uncle Tom barking seven nights a week for all the big executives to laugh at when they go to their cocktail parties. That's right, you, Mr. Oreo Hall, with the polka dot leather jackets, fake prescription glasses, and big rubber gums. <laughs> Who are you to pass judgment on me, to try to tell me what I should or should not talk about? You don't know me. You never walked in my shoes. See, I'm a funny guy like that, Arsenio. You treat me good, I treat you better. You treat me bad, I treat you worse. So I'll tell you what, talkie. Get together with your 45 writers and come after me. Because since you tried to rain on my parade, I'm going to piss all over you. Do you hear that one? I'm going to piss all over you. I'm going to show this country what a ballless pussy you are. You don't like what I'm saying? Too bad. It's rough when somebody sticks a mirror in your face. You know what I'm saying? So I'll tell you what. You want to come after me? Fine. Because I'll be waiting, Oreo. The defense rests. Wow. Your Honor? Wow. Wow. Ooh. Whoa, wait a second now. All wait a I second. Know is you got to laugh out of Fred. Oh, my. <laughs> Let me first say something. Dice, I don't know what to say right now. I'm completely speechless. I, I think moved. you summed it up. <laughs> first of all, there was a, a. I don't know if you caught it, Robin, but there were some accusations made in there. Yes, I caught every one of them. What I are don't you know, talking about? I don't. Did well, you I write was there when I saw him? Well, now, what did you see exa exactly? Well, this is years ago, you know, before he became uh, the famous, famous of talk shows. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, one night, in the, I saw a few things with him one night he was dating this girl who by the way you know was one of these white bleach blonde chicks go ahead and he got mad at her he was having some kind of argument and all of a sudden he grabbed her by her bleach blonde hair yeah and yanked her out of the comedy store and started slapping her around till some comics got in between Ooh. really yeah you this saw is a that. guy that tries to come on tv and say hey i'm mr america i'm mr nice guy who i once saw jump into an audience just because a guy like heckled him like 
you know, like you got heckled. Which I'm sure he beat, got a lot. And beat the crap out of the guy. <laughs> he beat the crap out yeah. of the guy. Mr. Nice Man. Well, yeah. that's handling it, isn't it? <laughs> so you're telling me that he beat up so a white woman. So come on! You're saying he beat up a come white woman. Come get me! You're saying he beat up a white woman. He smacked her around. Oh, he smacked her around. He didn't beat her to a pulp. Because somebody stopped him. I guess he wanted to get her home first. Right. <laughs> wow, wow. This is a, this. Ooh. Well, there were some other accusations in there. Oh yeah, but I'm saying I'm dizzy from the accusations. <laughs> this is a guy that you know. What was the other accusation about? Nothing that, about what, Oba Oba. What about <laughs> now? What was that Oba Oba and his balls went? <laughs> Do you remember uh, uh, about a month uh, ago? How was that? A month ago. Oba Oba. No, I'll tell you what it is. A month ago. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it is. A month ago, he had this. Uh, there's this traveling show. I actually saw it in Vegas. It's called no. Oba Oba. Oba, Oba. With, with all clothes. these Brazilian dancing chicks. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. right. So for like a week or two straight, there was one chick that really knocked him out. Right. You know, and he, he'd show her every night, you know, with a fat ass jiggling around. Right, right. You know, and right. he'd be like, oh, I got to get in there, you know, get my balls wet, that kind of thing. Right. You know, but this is a guy that when I come on the show, if I say like, you know, like, uh, you know, I like to bang chicks. He's like, uh, he makes that stupid face. Yeah, makes face the face. Like, oh, that's wrong, Dice. You know, that's wrong. In the meantime, he keeps showing this chick like I got a bang. Well, according to the Inquirer, he was at all the Magic Johnson parties. Is that true, Ron? Yeah. Well, he was at a lot of them. Yeah, Magic's he went to best all, friend. He went to all the whore parties. Right. You know, till everybody, you know, you, you know, I don't wish AIDS on anybody. I do. But <laughs> I wish Arsenio would get AIDS. How do you like that? No, I, so, I wish he'd get AIDS. Well, you could say it. <laughs> I wish it. That's right. I'll say it. You know, and, but, but this you haven't got far enough. That's a guy that goes on all, to all the whore parties and tells me I shouldn't talk about women in that way. What am I doing? I'm talking about Right, that's all. You know what I mean? That's all. Yeah, yeah. In other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you're talking about women. He's, he's doing, doing it. it. That's right. All right. all right. I wish I was doing the things I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Trini, I'm coming home. I got to get in there. <laughs> and I'm sure she's waiting, man. You, right, you must have turned the wrong with this. I Look, mean, Trini, when oh, you talk like this, this that, is going to drive a while. What a girl. Uh, well, when we come back, let me start the news because you like to comment on the events, right? Yeah, and this will give so you a chance. Do it. Don't talk. You about need it. to calm down. All right, look. I'm right. Well, I'm glad he got that out. What? Yeah. Yo, this is Frank from Nyack, New York. I would love to hear classic dice. Who doesn't love the dice man? May fourteenth, nineteen ninety-one. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Dice Clay. Very relaxed, Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, and there he is. Hot Tub Johnny West. That's Dice. That's your father, right? Yeah. All right. Hi, hey, nice to see you. That's Fred, right? Can I call you Fred? Oh, thank you. Downtown Ronnie. I don't know. I asked Stray again. We got. I got it. I got it. We're gonna start with this. All right. Look at Dice, old tan, Mr. Hollywood. How are you? We gotta wake up. You hear? You, you gotta understand. You hear me now? Listen to me. <laughs> you know. Hey, you know, Hot Tub just re responds to that when you say it. Is that right? We're very nauseous. Hey, Hot Tub, you hear me? Hey. <laughs> oh, thank you. What happened? You did Joan Rivers yesterday? Yeah. How'd that go? Good. I would have been there, but I had to go. Aren't I an exciting guest? <laughs> Jackie. What'd you do on Joan Rivers? Uh, you know, I hung out. That to do some funny, do anything weird? Did you grab her ass? No, no. I grabbed her ass. It's pretty tight. Really? Yeah. It's pretty tight for a woman in her what? Uh, 50s. Well, Dice, your parents still married or your father uh, single at this point? Uh, no, they're, they're together. Oh, you're together, right? Of course. How many years have you been married? Uh, well, on and off about... Uh, no, a long time, a long time. You don't have to answer him. Hey, Dice, what, did I hit something? How many years? <laughs> no, they're in the middle of a big fight. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, it could be the end, huh? No, 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 no. Never no. the end. Probably being Dice's father, you probably get a lot of young women, that's why. Oh, they yeah. flock around me like... Well, we had these uh, these penthouse chicks you would have liked last oh, night. Oh, beautiful. Where'd chicks. you get them? Uh, They came on the River Show. They presented me with um, the key over there. <laughs> Yeah. See, the penthouse uh, key? The penthouse key? <laughs> what penthouse do you mean? Key. Joan had like a little thing planned. That you she don't have a in. penthouse key, do you? No. What's with you and Joan? Did Joan help you early on in your career or something? Cause you she was been, actually the first talk show to ever have you that ever put me on. So like you feel like, uh, hey, I owe her or something, so you go on the no. show. No. I don't owe her nothing. But uh, you, feel, but you feel good about her. But it was nice of her when she did it. 
So then you, you always make I mean? a point to go on her show. You know, I could have brought up that when I did the show over there, yeah, she didn't give me panel. You know, right? She didn't let you. But sit you know, down. I let things go. Right. You know, I did my act. I sat down. And she said, "Well, that's the end of the show," and I'm like. What do you mean that's the end of the show? Don't I get panicked? I mean, I'm over here, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're <laughs> over you. there, you're funny. And uh, and now, you know, my mother's sitting out there with my father over there, and they want me to talk, and it's like, you know, good Who's night. Who's this girl nice. you're in the newspaper with? This one. What girl? This one. The guy's really? seen. Where's that say? from? This is from... Uh, Probably some hoa that leached onto me somewhere. No, no, no. Us Magazine. What is that? Yeah, Who is that? Have you say? seen this? No, I didn't see it. Give me Where the picture. You're at a, you're at a uh, Steven Seagal opening, Andrew Dice Clay, with Love, Kathleen, Monica. Who's that? Is that That's my girlfriend. That's oh, Trini? That's Trini, yeah, right? Let me see. That's a picture of her. Where is Because oh, Gary yeah. goes, that's not Trini. Oh, There's that's Baba cool. Booey. Baba Booey Is this a new one? Yeah. Yeah, she's cute. Of course never, she's cute. I never saw your girlfriend before. Well, when she's in town, you know, I'll bring her in. Yeah, I'd like to meet her. Every once in a while, I say to Dice, we'll get together at my house. But that never happens. No, it never happens. we will. Eh, who cares? I mean, listen, I don't want to put any pressure know, on you. I always feel like I'm putting on? pressure. You don't think he wants to get together? I don't no, know. No, I don't know I what do. he wants. Come on, I, I don't know what you want to do. We rap nice. Come we on, rap. don't start. Oh, oh, don't start. <laughs> don't start. Did I tell you I just got up? Did I tell you I was sweating all night? <laughs> no. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. I, I was like, uh, I had Ajida. What's with your father, man? He's got the best job of all. He gets to be. You're the manager, right? No, I'm not the manager. Because we always well, go to. Why do you say that when you are? Huh? Why do you say you're not the manager? Well, I'm his personal manager. He's the only one I listen to, believe me. All the parasites out in L.A. I don't listen to. And your father watches your money and stuff for you because the other guys would just steal it, right? Well, he says he watches it. I make sure I never see anything. So you got to pay your father? Do you do you get paid for your services? Oh, I certainly do. I get paid very well. He knows that. <laughs> He's a very rich guy, daddy boy. He is? So is that yeah. what's going on between uh, him and your mother? No, no, no. She's got plenty of bread. What are you fighting about, then? Um, we never fight. No, they're not fighting. Are they together? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're together. <laughs> you're together? Yes, we are. You ever get tempted on the road when you're with Dice and never. you see all these young girls? Never. Really? Never. Hey, Fred, you proud of Dice, man, your son? I'm very proud. You can't believe it, right? It's like a dream. Did did you you, think, what did you think he was going to be when he grew up? When he up? was growing up, did you think he was an idiot? Huh? Never. My old man thought I was an idiot. Never. He was right. <laughs> Thanks, Dice. So maybe no, he was did, right. Did Fred look into little Dice's crib and see a genius? Did you save all the movements from Dice's diaper? <laughs> like, were you one of those dads who thought everything he did was great? We, uh, we have it painted all over the wall. What, the Dice? Whatever he had. Dice is all over. Yeah, see, I used to, I used to be an artist with my... Uh, no, but I'm saying you always felt that he was a great kid. Stuff. We always knew he was a genius. You did know? That's right. You believed him all along. All Boy, my father didn't. That's why my father's not my manager. Hey, Fred, you want to hear my father? Wanna did you hear? ever sound like this when talking to a young dice? I got, every time I start thinking good of my father, I would play these tapes, Fred. <laughs> I'm going to play them for you right now. Let's see. Hey, here's my father counseling me, uh, young Howard Stern. I'm seven I, at the time. I told you not to be stupid, you moron. <laughs> there he is. Here. Shut up! Sit down! All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now my father walks around. I knew, you know, he always had a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Sure, 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 Dad. Right. You hear me now? Hi. Hey, at least you believed in dice. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? I hear now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, let me tell you something, my friend. Hey, now you're working out again. Last time I saw you, you were chunky. You look good yeah, now. but I look real good now. Now you look good. You were so, letting yourself go. You were getting carried away with that Hollywood lifestyle. You don't come back to your roots anymore. Yeah, but now I'm there. Johnny, am I boring you? What's no, your no, problem, what you, what dude? You start with him? <laughs> He'll rip off your arms and beat you to death with him. Yeah. You don't know Johnny. <laughs> don't get him crazy over there. Kinnison, yeah. Kinnison told me you yeah. made up that story about uh, taking his do-rag. No. Is that true? You wouldn't lie to me in Dice, would you? Because we weren't there. It Do just happened again to him. Oh, what happened? No. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. What? <laughs> yeah, we get into trouble every time you tell us. No, it happened story. again. Duff from Guns N' Roses beat him up. <gasps> beat up who? Beat Sam? Uh, Sam up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just had Duff on the air the other day. Yeah, he was just did on with us. Did he tell you? He didn't mention anything about that. Yeah. 
Wait, what are you uh, saying? This, this isn't more than ten See, days ago. Now, Sam thinks I'm, if I if, if Dice brings this stuff up, Sam thinks that Sam I'm a bad guy. Stan? Stan? No, what Sam happened Stan. was <laughs> Sam will stop talking to us. Duff calls me up. Right. Ten in the morning. I'm getting ready to do a meeting. This, I was awake. You have a busy career. You have to take. And a um, and he starts telling me this whole story that uh, they were over at that uh, uh, Chateau joint. The Chateau. mama, mama, yeah. where uh, Belushi. Yeah, they weren't together. Right. You know, Sam was somewhere else. And Sam heard they were, uh, that Slash and Duff were in the hotel. Right. So, this is Duff's story. Right. I understand. So Duff. So now Sam knocks on Slash's door, and Slash invites him in, and, and Sam starts screaming at Slash that he promised he'd do him a record, and he wants to be successful, and he owes him this and that. And now we cut to Sam choking Slash to death. What? You're kidding me. Yeah, this is the, what Tuff told me. All know? right, so this, is a, this is third. So hand. he's choking him to death, and the girl that Duff is with wakes Duff up, Right. And she goes, I'm not sure, but I think somebody's killing Slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? Maybe you want to And Sam was Now, there Slash is a pretty powerful guy, though. You would think that uh, he could uh, fend for himself. Yeah, but uh, Sam, once again, was with his bodyguard. So, you know, I he see. had backup to choke him. Right. So now, Duff gets up, he says, out of a dead sleep, and he goes in the hallway... And he says he sees, like, this 350-pound monster charging at him. Right. He goes, he just woke up. He's just getting out of bed. Right? And, um... Look at Hot Tub. He loves this. Look at him. And then what happens is, so he tackles Duff, and the bodyguard holds Duff, and he starts hitting Duff, and Duff got away, and he split his lip. Right. He split Sam's lip. So, and, so Duff punched Sam in the face? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said his whole his whole you know head was swollen, <laughs> and then Sam was going to have him arrested because after he punched him, you know he dragged them into his room. Duff dragged <laughs> Sam into his yeah, room where where uh, there's a mirror. <laughs> Is this and, true? No, I'm telling you. I mean, you, you just heard this. Let's, let's just say this could me. be a total lie. No, I mean, because you, 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 you don't know. You don't know if this is true. He or dragged not. him into his room, and yeah. he had a new dirty rag on his head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and he ripped it off oh, his head geez. once again because he heard Johnny did it. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, "Tell me what you see, Sam. Tell me what you see." And Sam is going. I'm Bozo! <laughs> bozo! <laughs> no, that part didn't happen. That but, didn't happen. <laughs> but, but no, he was going to have him arrested. He was going to have him arrested. The cops were there, and and he dropped the charges on them. Well, let me just say something. Can you we know call the police? This, can, you know, it's, this it's might terrible. not be true. Let me say something. that You are a good friend of mine, and Sam is a good friend of mine. I know you guys don't see eye to eye. But uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, uh, I, I care have about nothing against the man. Right. I think he's a very talented individual. There I told you, you that. You just were repeating a story that it's, happened. It's just a pity what's happened to him. <laughs> okay. Well, let me just say that, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel bad about it. What can I do? Listen, Dice is very honest and is a See, now but... I'll be in trouble because I laughed at this. Yeah, but it was a funny story. We don't know <laughs> what's true. What can I say? Are you saying that he ripped off the thing and then said it's... No, no, he didn't no, do that. that but but he did. Oh, okay. he, he, he split his lip open. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, set this up. What? Were you going to do this in the news about Jane? No. Jane Weedlin? I didn't know anything about this until you told me. Uh, I thought you were going right. to it in the news. <laughs> Jane Weedlin. Of the Go Go. Of the Go Go's. Is it, like loves animals so much, like she does disruptive things. Well, you know, she's a member of PETA. So Jane <laughs> really. shirt? $30. I cut the Jane. neck and the sleeves off. Like. Oi. Oi. Who's that big dude with Oi. you? My bodyguard. Oh, man. Yeah, go sit over there, bodyguard. What's the matter with you? Yeah, sit down, Janie. Jane, let me look at you. Mm. Come over here so I can look. Come over here. She is so cute. I knew cute. you'd want me to do this. You yeah, taking yeah, off? Wait, yeah. she's taking off her clothes. Her voice is so grating, it just makes the come acids here. in your Whoa. belly bubble. You taking off your pants? Nah. Oh, come on. No, I just have boring underwear on. Can I make out with you? Later, after the show. Thanks. She's really very pleasant. <laughs> she's cute. A hard mark. Do you know Dice? <laughs> Do you know Dice Clay? Hi there. Do you know me? No. This is know. Dice. I'm breaking. She <laughs> Do you like Dice? I mean, I don't know you personally. I know, I know, I know. You, you like Dice? Him. You live alone? Or you have a problem with him? I don't, I'm not familiar How can she have a problem with me? She's sitting wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> How can she have a problem with me? Are those breast implants? No. No, no. 
They're cute. Thank they you. are. Thank you. They are cute. They're, they're happy bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> Let me understand something, Jane. Yes, Alan. Jane of the Go Go's. Well, you guys broke up again, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I know. You tell me. Yeah, it's tell a day to day thing. Tell yeah. Dice what you did yesterday. Yeah. Tell everyone. And tell Robin. We snuck into Oscar de la Renta's grand opening of his new fur. Salon. No, his, his line of furs. Uh huh. And then yeah. when the show started, we threw our clothes off and then we jumped up on stage with a banner that said we'd rather go naked than wear fur. But you weren't naked. Well, we had like, you know, see through little things on. You had bra and panties? No, it was like a little, you know, ladies' nylons, it was like a little thing made out of that. Could you oh. see your breasts through it? Yes. So you wouldn't, well, and you could see. Panty part, the the panty part. Could you see your private parts through I tr- it? I trimmed my bush. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I you bet don't like she's that? she's got a bush that will make a chi up that jealous, eh? Nah. Why are you talking about the president at a time like this? <laughs> right? You, thank right you, Robin. <laughs> what do you... Uh, Jane, you know, i got to be careful Never here. trim it. Never body trim so t- it. Are you married? Yeah. I was mm. married last time. I'm still said. married. Mm, too bad. Now they don't want to talk to you. Well, your hubby would be pleased to see you now. Do <laughs> you like comedy? Yeah. Where do you live in L.A.? Um, well, kind of outside L.A. In the suburbs. Well, where? I'm not going to tell you. No, the city, not the, you know, the address. The city? Agura. Mm Hmm? It's a famous town. (laughs) She's got a lot of money. She's in the Go-Go's. She made tons of dough. And she wrote a lot of those songs, right? Yeah. And you're the one who broke up the Go-Go's because you thought uh, Belinda was a big pain in the ass. I did not. I quit, and then they broke up. I couldn't help And what are you doing now? Taking my clothes off a lot. Charming. <laughs> Look at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking ready to eat you up. I swear what to God. Oh, uh, not lately, no. Well, why not? What, I, what, are, I got what lazy. do you think? You're so perfect. No, I know. I mean, <laughs> no, so you're, you're good. You, I mean, you, you're so you, you look nice. Thank you. Well, that's how I make millions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to sing a note, baby. Not it, that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, you want to finish up with some news? The uh, Tylenol case has been settled already, crazy. Howard. Yesterday I asked you whose fault was it that uh, some maniac tampered with the Tylenol and put cyanide in it. Oh, that's up, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, the company settled. They decided not to go to court and fight it out. Jennifer Crazy. Pyromania. How yeah. much money? They won't say. It's a sort of seal. They sealed the uh, Let me ask you guys a question. Settlement. Yeah. Don't you think it's not the fault of Tylenol that some imbecile is going around tainting the Tylenol? Why is it their responsibility? Why is it always Tylenol, too? Right. Yeah, it's always, that happened Why years ago. Why is it Bayer you know? or Buffering? Maybe it's a competing company that's doing Shut that. up when I'm talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> me. Oh, oh, big man. Oh, now you got an argument going. Uh, yeah, you know, you're yeah. five minutes. We're having a fun. Let's oh, now she's got him. I mean, she's got to open up her trap when, when I'm talking. You're trying to say and something? And she's, she's in the way you hit. I mean, I'm over I hear here. You. Your head. I hear you. And then you back it up with, why is it always Jane, it's true. Like she wants somebody to poison bear now. Right. <laughs> now yeah, you give some idiot yeah, the why idea, are you yeah, the I'll be the bear killer. You know, that really is kind of a dopey statement. <laughs> yeah, Jane, you got to admit that. Uh, dumb like. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not that dumb. Jed's a very lucky man. Damn right he is. He sounds like a real idiot. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ah, I don't know how Jed... I mean, just that, I mean, how can you lay there? Oh, Jed, give it to me. You know? Right, right. You know, do you have, like, you know... Do you but have, like, dice is easier? Yeah. Oh, dice. Come on, dice. Slam it in there. Come on. <laughs> bang it out. Come on. Come on. Rip me to shreds. I don't know. I think you know, Oh, oh Jed, me. Jed, it, you, that's the thing with guys. You know, guys are too macho. They're always like... Uh, but you don't know, you know Jed. You know, he didn't name like, himself. Um, you know, guys always think they, like, hurt the chick. You ever notice that? Right, right. You know, it's like, are you okay? I always <laughs> Yeah, right. Are you okay? Yeah, they seem to recover <laughs> pretty good. Triplets fall out of there. 20-pound <laughs> triplets fall out of there, and guys <laughs> think they're doing damage. Yeah. The My whole friggin' stuff. arms in there. There's no G's by the <laughs> You know, because sometimes they make, like, maybe it ain't big enough. Oh, I, you know, I got everything in there ready, you know? <laughs> Him and yeah, all. I want to thank uh, Fred for coming in, Dice's TK, father. Get the door, TK. Very nice meeting you, Fred. You're a good man. Believe me, you watch out for your boy. I like that. Fully at the plaza. Yeah. Dice, always hey, good yeah. to see you, Jane. Fully. I love you. I love you too, Howard. I really care about you. That's my only
All right, Artie, now's your chance to straighten out with Dice. I got him on the phone. Let oh, me boy. just uh, fill everyone in. So Artie and Dice did a show together in Atlantic City. Bottom line, Artie came in and was pissed that Dice hadn't given him his money. And um, Artie expressed it. He, you know, I told Artie that it should have been a 50-50 split. But he didn't make that arrangement. Yeah, and that's Artie not, that's feels nobody's he sold fault. at least eight or eight or nine hundred seats there, and uh, but okay, that's not Dice's fault. He offered you five grand, and I took it. Yeah, that's but you're no just problem. Pissed that you haven't gotten it. Absolutely, I just want to know when I'm getting the money. All right, let me get to Dice. Dice probably has an explanation for all this. I'll let you guys work it out. Fair enough, because I know it's uncomfortable to do this in real life. Sure. Oh, it's not uncomfortable here at all. <laughs> I, I think yeah. it's less uncomfortable here if, if it's sort of, you know, oh, on the dear. air. Hey, Dice. Yeah, it's not uncomfortable. Good morning, soldier. <laughs> Dice, what happened here? Uh, you explain right. it. You talk to Artie. I'll stay out of it. Okay, but I, I sort of need to know what did happen because I got oddball calls yesterday. Right. Here's what happened. This, I'm not sure exactly. Why did you tell him, Artie? Well, nothing happened. I just said, Howard asked how the gig went. I said it was great. The crowd was great. I said Dice did a great job. But um, I haven't gotten paid for it yet. <laughs> That's all. And I said, I'm just wondering when I'm getting paid. Well, you were a little more. And, you, you were a little well, and I said, I, I am mad about it. All right. Uh, number one. All right. If you're mad about it, that's okay. You know what I mean? That's uh, That's not what the issue. Did you tell him? Before you got into that, how phenomenal the show was with us. Yes, I did. Of course I Not did. Not just me, with you. What? What did do you, you mean? Did you tell him how you did? Yeah, I said we both did We both did very well. It was no, great. Just now, you said Dice did a good job, like you were, you know, sort of judging my performance. <laughs> well, he is judging your performance. No, well, no, they asked me how it went. You know what I'm saying? We, the reason we did the show, we wanted to see how we would be as a team together performing and it you know i'm still raving about the show well Artie said that you were great he was great uh okay. Artie did say probably that he was just as responsible for bringing in the crowd as you were okay. and he kind of was saying and as a free opening act he was great yeah he's <laughs> and, and he said not only did i accept five thousand dollars but really i didn't get any money for it and he but Artie also said i'm going to fill you in on everything dice so you're not okay. in the dark Artie said look Artie headlines shows, and he has other comedians working for him. He pays them that night on the spot, and he makes sure it happens. There's no reason why Artie had to wait. Is that, am I misquoting exactly, you, Artie? No, that's exactly uh, right. No, okay. it's okay. I'll go through it with you. I have no problem going through it with you. But I don't know why you didn't just call me, because, number one, I called up. No, this is what happened. Number one, I didn't tell my Pam that night. I wait till I get paid, and then I send the checks out, okay? So now what happened is I actually called you, Artie. I was in Florida like, I don't know, four or five days ago, and I actually left you another message going, call me up and leave me the address for your agent so I could send the check. Artie, did that happen? Back. I never so, got that message. So wait a minute, so wait a minute. So yesterday, when I got all these calls, I just got back to L.A. Sunday night. Artie, are you calling Dice a liar? Mm. Oh, no, I'm just saying, I don't know if something happened with the Dude, phone. I never got that phone. message. No, no, I left that message. You get a thousand messages from me. That one you didn't get. But I'm telling you what I did. Yesterday, I did get to your agent, you know, and I said, give me your address. That was yesterday. And the check out. But, Dice, was that a reaction to Artie complaining what, on the air? What bothers me, no, no, what bothers me, no, I've been trying to call Artie just for that information. You know, I didn't come home from it. Like Artie's shaking his head that you're bullshitting. No, no, I, I'm saying I never got that message. Look, I wouldn't bullshit. I got no reason to bullshit him. Number one, you know, uh, what gets me crazier than everything is, is not the fact that you didn't get paid. I mean, I got no problem paying you. What bothers me more is that what I heard about that the show was half sold, mm. the Artie was on the show. That's true. No, but no, I mean, that's what Artie said. Well, this, that's what someone told me who works for the Borgata. That, I, that's not I'll, me assuming. I'll just that. tell you the, the fact. When I first went on Howard's show, um, that time, the time I, I asked you, you know, whatever it was, whatever day that was. Right. There were 200 seats left to be sold. By the time I was done with Howard's show, this, this is why I give you all that credit, Howard. The, the tickets were gone. So well, you didn't really wasn't. need Artie is what you're saying. No, not for that show. If I would have went into the bigger room, and I'll tell you the truth, they were chanting for Artie to come out. I mean, you know, what's happened since I've come on your show is that, you know, I'm getting people that, that 
by Sirius coming to the show. Right. Whether it's in, in, in whether it's in Florida, whether it's in Vegas, Atlantic City. All I wanted to do was finally team up with Artie because I heard about his performing ability and, you know, team up like these guys do, the uh you know, the blue collar guys, these guys. So, you know, people have been telling me about Artie, so I said, Well let's try this. Now if we would have See I'm gonna be this, honest with you, Artie thinks no, but let me. Can I tell you what Artie thinks? Because okay. Artie's not man enough to tell you himself. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, Are you I don't scribbling notes? Artie, to no, no, no. I don't no, understand Artie, what you. Artie told me so. Let me what? ask him about what he just said, though. Okay. Um. So you you say are you claiming that before I announced that I was going to be a part of the Borgata show, you had already sold it out? No, I'm saying there were 200 tickets left to sell when I came on Stern show. And That's what I'm saying. And then when now, I what I am saying, this I'll admit to, when we announced or you announced that you're going to do the show with me, I got calls to go into the bigger room. Let's open this up and go into the. Uh, they have a bigger room there, either that or add a second show, because there were so many calls coming in. We could have done a second show, and that I would have I would have given you a lot of credit for. And you know what? If we would have done that. I would have even gave a lot more money because you would have had a lot to do with that that second show. Okay, I get it. So that that part I agree with. But when would I have gotten this money? <laughs> yeah, when is he getting his money? Well, it's in a trust, Artie. You know what I mean? Dice has actually invested it for you, and he's waiting to watch it grow. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know he wanted a paper bag that night. <laughs> well, Dice, come on. You work with comics. You get paid that night or the next day. I mean, come on. The next day. I, I got I to gotta live my life. I got to get back to L.A. and take care of business. That's what happened. Well, I gotta live my life too. <laughs> what? Couldn't you get out of town, Artie? Look, you weren't depending on your life for the, you know, since you said it on the air, the five grand I gave you, and you know, you don't know that. But what does that have to do with anything? It's, it has nothing. It's my money. <laughs> I know it's your money, but you know, I gotta come back and take. When I come back out of town, the first thing I do is take care of everybody that's with me on the road and have all the checks sent out. I run it like a business. I'm not getting in my car and running to a... <laughs> Divvying up cash? Away. I'm all over the country. How do you do it, Artie, when you have comics working for you? You can ask anybody who's ever worked for me. That I either tell the guy who's promoting the gig, I say, listen, you got to cut this guy a check for this amount, me a check for this amount. If they have a problem with that, I make sure that that night... The comic gets a check, All right, either so from my account if I get the full amount, or from the guy. It's your fault that you didn't say dice. Can I get paid that night? <laughs> I didn't know you expected to get paid that night. I guess you know, that, I guess it's my fault that I didn't specify. But it's ten days later, and I don't have the check. Well, you call your agent. I, I spoke to. I called my agent twenty times this week. Did you talk to him yesterday? Dice, I talked to him. A week. I had to go to Pittsburgh after we worked together, and I called him, and I said, Dice didn't pay me. He said, I'll call Dice's agent. He started calling your agent a week ago. Your agent said, I don't know anything about this. Dice is on the road. I can't get him. And I said, well, as of right now, I haven't gotten paid. The thing is that I was on the road. Dice, what does that have to do with anything that you were on the road? I mean, I got to wait for you to get off the road to get five grand? And I'm not like, no, when I come home, I take care of business. What's the well, when are you getting home so we can get that? Well, let me know. No, He's never minute. going home again. I mean, now you're starting to piss me off. I mean, I want you to call me a bull. You never call me this week, ever. I never got a fucking phone call yeah, from you. Now you call me a liar because I did leave. I'm not calling you a liar. All I'm saying is maybe my phone fucked up. I didn't get a phone message from you. I'm calling you a liar. What I'm saying is. I called you and said, I need your agent's address to send the check. Never got that message. I yeah. gave you, remember after the, after the Borgata, we were sitting in your dress room? Yeah, we you were, said, I, write I, down I, your corporation's name and your agent's name. I did, I handed you that piece of paper that night thinking, okay, maybe I'll get it, you know, Monday. It's a Friday night. I and, know you needed it. And if you would have said, you want to know, if you would have actually told me, can I just get paid that night in advance? I would have had a check cut for you just to give you there. Oh, are you I saying it's just... embarrassing to say that? He thinks he's supposed to just know that. No, they, no. Uh, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying, what does it matter if I need the money or not? It's my money. I'm not needing the money. I just take care of it. He's Look, saying he I waits. All over. You had to drive 10 minutes to go do your gig. I went to a th few different cities. I come home. I'm going to cut. The check's been cut already because now 
Now tell me you didn't talk to your agent yesterday. I did. I'm, well, I'm admitting to that. I talked to him yesterday. You say that I'm sending the check. Uh, he's, he left me a message and said, I talked to Dice, call me back. I didn't get a chance. But that's what the call was about. What do you think it was? I want to go out with the guy? <laughs> Dice, it's still ten days later. Okay, so what do you want? A bonus? No, I want my money. <laughs> I don't want a bonus. I want so, the money why, we agreed to. Why can't to? we get past this? Why, why is it always about money? You're the one that even <laughs> said to me before the gig, I don't even care if I get paid. And I said, no, I got to pay you. Dice, when did you get paid for the Borgata gig? They gave me a check, half a, half the check that night. Okay. And okay. when did you get the other half? Now, I didn't send the check till yesterday because I came home Sunday. So how is that my problem? No, it's not your problem. So I send the check to the accountant. I call the accountant. I give him your agent's number. And I say, cut the check. Since I don't know why you talk about what you make on the air. It's stupid. But I told him, cut the check for Artie and send it to him. That's it. All right, well, so, I'll let you know when I get the check. Are you saying that Dice could have uh, made that so, same phone call from the road, Artie? But I, don't I, I guess. I mean, there's a lot of ways of getting in touch with people Howard, nowadays. Howard, number one, I never worked with the guy before, right? Right. So I'm thinking, you know, I wasn't thinking anyway. If he, if he wanted to check that night, that's all he would have had to say. And I would have taken care of it in advance of leaving L.A. Actually, I think this is Dice giving Artie a little more credit. He doesn't think Artie's desperate for five thousand dollars, so he's well, taking his time. He's well, getting home. I mean he's gonna. Say, Why I'm should sure. that matter? I mean, Howard's not desperate for his paycheck uh, coming next I week. Just but expect <laughs> it on time. <laughs> exactly. Right. What are you gonna get me? It's friggin' six in the morning here. What are you gonna get me mad for? <laughs> you know, for nothing. For nothing. For well, for five grand. grand. I, I'm trying to team us up to do giant things, and, and you're, you know, for the five grand. How's that? That makes you sound bad. No, it doesn't. It doesn't Dice. make me sound bad, Dice. It makes. It doesn't make me want to work with you again. If I gotta wait fucking two months for my money. <laughs> oh my god! What do you want me to tell you? If you if you want to do what you're doing, then do what you're doing. We teamed up to do big things together, right? Did We're you two have a, a talk? Deal? What? Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I don't. I don't know if Artie wants me to bring that right. up. Right? Did you t have any kind see, of conversation? Artie doesn't want to tell. They see Dice wants to team up with Artie, and Artie thinks the reason that Dice really wants to team up is he really wants me involved, uh -huh. and this that Dice's way to get involved with me is through Artie. Uh huh. No, that's not. Uh, that, but Artie's afraid to say that. Uh, that's that's without question no, what's going on. Come on. Oh uh, really? No, wait a minute. Really? No, no, Alan, please. I come on your show, I announce a show, when you say, you know, you got something to plug. You bet. Anytime yeah, you want. It sells out, right? That's right. Anytime you but, want. But who but who says why it's happening? I don't say anything. No, I say why it's happening. Yeah, Isn't but that I, what happened? I, 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 yeah, I but, I, but I don't know. Artie, Artie feels he can go do these shows himself. Here's my thing, Dice. Yeah, no, let me hear, hear what Artie the, has the, to say. The, the room we played at the Borgata last week. Okay. I'm doing a show, two shows there, August 25th and 26th, by myself. Okay. Do you? And do you, they're both going to sell. That. They'll both sell out in about four or five days, and I'll make probably eleven times what I made with you there. Okay. Now, why? Why would I want to? Why would I want to do work with you when I don't need it? Why, and why would you want to work with me? Know. You don't give a. You never saw me do stand up. It's not about the fact that you like the fact that I'm a comedian. I'm on the greatest show ever that can put people in seats. And you know you want it. You want to get those plugs. So uh, it's I, almost I, like you're I, patronizing me. Like, oh, you're a great comic. I want to work with you. No, you want to get plugs on the Howard Stern show, which so I totally get. So you don't think working with me? Okay, so you're the greatest comic guy. No, 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 Dice, the reason I worked with you, the reason I worked with you was because you're an icon. You're one of my heroes. The, the reason I did this is because, look, it's not, and this is why I told Howard. Howard thinks I should have asked for more money. I'm like, no, it's not about the money. It's about the fact that I'm getting to work with a guy who is a true icon. He's a legend. And it was something I could tell my kids one day. I opened up for Dice, but teaming up with you, why don't we just go make our own money ourselves? You know, why do we got to team up think, together? You don't think it could benefit you and us as a team teaming up together and doing giant places? You don't think that's strong? Uh, well, I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't, I'd rather work by myself. But if that's what you want to do, that's up to you. You, I heard, when I started doing Howard, my attendance record went up immediately. 
he gave me an outlet. Uh, it, it, it's going great between us. He gave me my own show to do. My attendance at my shows have gone up, I don't know, 80% since I went on Howard. And no one knows that more than me, man. I know. Let me talk a minute. Now I hear about Artie Lang and how terrific Artie is. So I think, you know what, maybe it would be a good idea because guys are doing this to team up with Artie. Let's see what happens. So I approach you. I'm doing this Borgata gig. And I say, look, Artie, what, what do you want for the gig? Because I wouldn't want to insult you either. So I, I throw a number and you go, you know what, that's fine because the next night I'm at some club in uh, Pittsburgh and I'm making X amount, which I wouldn't say on the air. All right, great. So we do the gig. All that happened was a misunderstanding of when you got the pay, okay? I took care of it, but if you don't want to work with me, that's up to you. And if you think I can't do bigger places without you, well, you're mistaken. And if you can do two and three nights at the Borgata and, and in Vegas and bigger arenas without me, then go do them. I just think you're a good guy. I thought we, we got along terrific, and I wanted to move forward with it. Dice, honestly, I would have opened up for you at the Borgata for nothing, just for the story. I really would have. That's how much I respect you. But honestly, the guys team up for those tours because they have trouble selling tickets on their own. I'm blessed with the fact that I'm on a show. And look, two years from now, if I'm not on the show anymore, I could be begging guys to give me work. That's how comedy is. But right now, i got to make as much money as I can. And right. I can do it on my own. Uh, and that's up to you, though. See, Howard putting me on the air automatically brings my attendance up. Nice. I just thought it would be a great thing to team up with somebody finally. But why sp the jobs to go in front of a crowd? And, and to, to move forward with me on things. But Dice, as a businessman, if you could sell out those places on your own, why split the cut with me? He's talking about bigger places. He's talking about Madison well, Square I, Garden. You know, we've talked about it. This wasn't a one-way conversation. I said to you, we spoke about... No, we def you definitely brought this up to me. Absolutely. We spoke about something uh, on on the... Uh, in the Artie's intimidated to tell you what he thinks sometimes. What's that? I guess Artie's intimidated to tell no, you. No, no, I, I, I listened to what he said. Today. No, 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 listen. No, he, he, he came clean with you today. I listened to what he said about about what he the plans he wants to do, and I thought about it a little bit, but, I mean, nothing is set in stone. Nobody agreed to anything. No contracts were signed. And, yeah, no uh, contract because we got to sit down, and you don't just plan giant shows. I'm talking about the shows. Let's see. Hey, approach. Dice, let's see what the audience has to say. Ralph, go ahead. What do you want to say? Hey now, hey Artie, now. <clears throat> I love you, you know that, but I think you're being a bit of a dick on a few levels what? here. First of all, this I is think... another guy who's owed me a hundred dollars for two years, by the way, <laughs> Ralph. Right. Right. Don't oh, hell, oh, wait a minute, the next call, I'll be ripping me apart. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, guys, what Dice is saying, first of all, with the team up, it'd be fun. It'd be it'd not necessarily about money, be fun. I was excited. I wanted to go see you guys. Artie, has, have I ever come to see your show before? No, I was. Wow, wait, Ralph. If I team up with Dice, you'll come. <laughs> wow, wait, wow. hey, Dice. Where are we next, man? <laughs> I can get Ralph Sorella to come to the show. <laughs> Just listen for a minute. You know, fuck you, off, Ralph. Here's a guy you're saying you loved, you looked up to. It was an honor to open for him. Yeah, and I did. Two minutes later, because you didn't get your five grand that you would eat in Devil Dogs in a day. You're <laughs> oh, Ralph, you're a fucking loser, faggot. You piece of shit. I'm. So, how long should I wait for? How long should I wait for? The five grand, you no, cocksucker! You, you want me to wait the same wow, the same amount of time I waited for my hundred dollars and I put it with my bookie with you, you piece of shit? What, what's with the vulgarity? Can't you have a conversation? <laughs> 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 Is this what happens? Right? So, are you right, Ralph? You're right. No, but seriously. Where's, Artie, what did I? You you've owed me a hundred dollars for two years, you fucking Artie, piece of shit. Artie, Artie, and when I wanted to get the hundred bucks from you, said, "Get it from Will. He owes me fifty. It, it is. It's uh, Will. Will owes it to you. But listen to me. Why are you getting yourself all worked up over this five? Because you're. Oh, Dice is running God. it as a business. He's but, running things different. Ralph, how long should I wait for the five grand, Ralph? You tell me. How long should I wait for the five Gs? He was on the road. He was on the road, and he runs it like a business, and he gets back, and he makes sure that everything is on. He's got more people than you. Ralph, what would you know about well, making money and business? With you like he does, so he's got to get everybody paid. <laughs> you, you know what? Let, let, let me say this, though. Audie. <laughs> you're actually funny now, Ralph. Now you're, now you're saying funny, creative shit. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about dude how long am i supposed to wait for five thousand dollars Artie, 
how uh, that uh, I could uh, spend on devil dogs, you faggot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know why I'm fun. <laughs> What do you know about making money, Ralph? Go uh, fucking uh, go, go jerk off the Star Trek. <laughs> Ralphie Cakes, you are a lazy homo, Ralphie Cakes. It's like you work in slow mo, you're a bum. No job gets done while people go in on their paycheck. You're at home just watching Star Trek, Ralphie Cakes. You've got disgusting berries all over your face. You'd rather catch than pitch. That's why you're Howard's bitch. And your name is Ralphie Cakes. Yeah. Listen, Artie, <laughs> what you're doing is you're just obsessing on something. You don't give yeah, five thousand dollars. You're but you're you're getting pissed about it. You don't care about that five grand. I know you. You you go through that in two seconds. Yeah, wait a second, Ralph. 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 Okay, Ralph. Howard, okay, wait. Howard. Okay, let's. I'm going to speak calmly Howard, right now. Wait, he's going to speak calmly. What What does the fact whether I need the money or not? What does that have to do with getting money that's owed to me? It's well, my you know, money. You make a point. I mean, that's why I keep saying to you, if you needed it that night <laughs> and you told me, I would have just had a check there. Yeah. But since you didn't, all I did was take care of business when I got home. Dice, you know, Dice, to... wouldn't you wouldn't you think to mention to me? Look, I'm going on the road, Art. It might be 12 to 14 days before you get the money. I did tell you where I'm going. You know, I told you I'm going back to I'm going to Florida. I said I'm going to Vegas, and then I got home. I took care of it. I don't know what you're getting so crazy about. I still don't have the money. No, Boy. I think this is more because somebody told me that you were yelling yesterday about I'm not an opening act. Okay? I never said that. No, no, but listen to me. And that pissed me off. I go, number one, I didn't look at him like an opening act. We had an opening act. I treated him really special. I thought he was terrific. And on top of it, you know, when you talk about how five grand don't mean anything, tell him how much time he even had to do for the five grand. It wasn't like you had to go out there and destroy that crowd for an hour. Dice, an hour. dice, dice. Listen to me. You're really I'm fucking listen. pissing me off, Dice. Yeah. You really are. Uh, no, no, let me tell you something. Well, you, you, you. I, I took a pay cut, five thousand dollars. I put, I sold that place out for you, motherfucker. And I did twenty minutes. And you said I'll give you five thousand dollars. So, okay, fine, that's beautiful. How long am I gonna wait for it? I don't know why you're yelling and why you're in the studio. Because you're saying stupid shit. You know what? No, I'm not saying stupid shit. We were trying something out. I didn't do anything wrong. I came home. The check has been cut. I think. What are you trying out? Not to pay me? Is that is that the experiment we're working with? Maybe you don't <laughs> fucking hear me, okay? Oh, I hear you, dude. You can hear that the check has been sent, okay? So it's ten days later. I, the I'm check has been sent. Well, let me, <laughs> me ask you this, Artie. Is it with you? Have you ever done okay? like a? Have you ever done a commercial or something, and then they send the check to you like uh, a month a later? Weeks later? You know what I mean? Something. That's possible. I, I really right. don't know what this is about. I, I think for some reason you think you sold that room out, and you want to know something? You didn't have a fucking thing to do with that. So don't don't sit here. Should we get a guy on from the Borgata? Should we get the promoter on? Do you think I don't have? To do two nights at the Borgata, is that what you tell? I've been doing the Borgata for four years, Ralph. Uh, Ralph, uh, uh, fucking on. <laughs> you mad at Ralph now? <laughs> I am too. What are you going to get me mad about? And, and do you think if we did a bigger place, there wouldn't be more money involved for you? I didn't, I didn't sell anything out. You're right. Plugs on this show sold it out, dude. And I'm a, I'm a comedian who works on this show. No, no, Just admit no, you I'm need those plugs right I'm now. I'm not going to give credit. It ain't 1988 anymore. I'm not, not going to give credit where credit's not due. Okay. Wait a and second. This, this is out of him. Place. What happened here? I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happened is I did a show and Dice didn't pay me. That's what happened. This is, this is what I mean about everybody. You, you know, on the phone, they got a big fucking mouth, and it's hard to even get through what I want to say on the phone. But if I would stand there, believe me, you wouldn't open your fucking mouth. Oh, yeah, I would, Dice. Believe me, I would. Hey, you would. Believe me, I would. You know You're going to get that fucking opportunity. Fine. Uh, I'll be in L.A. tonight. <laughs> Oh, you'll be in L.A. today? Come on. I'll be in L.A. tonight. Bring it on. Bring it on if you got... Come to the set of Entourage tomorrow if they let you on. <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to get you a pass. You know what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Your plugs. You know what? You're doing fucking clubs, hee-hees and ha's. Don't tell me about nights at the fucking Borgata. I was trying to be cool with you. Yes, I didn't, I didn't really know your ability... 
before I came on Stern Show and I got to know you that way. So I said, let's team up. I really don't know where this is coming from. Dice, it's just coming from the fact that it took 11 days right. to get me so my money. I'm saying, hey, if I knew... That's where it's coming from. Nothing else. Right. I don't put myself right. on a level of a comic as you. I really don't. All right, chill out a minute, all right? If you would have told me this, I would have had a check for you. Because I didn't have a check for you, I got to wait till I come home and I pay everybody that's been with me. That's how I work the business. You didn't know that, and I didn't know you wanted it that night, okay? Not even so that I, night. It was a so Friday we worked. Monday, Tuesday, I, I, maybe I, I Wednesday. On the road for, for, I don't know, two and a half weeks, whatever it is. I came home and I paid you. It's that simple. So I'm apologizing for the misunderstanding, if that's what it is. But other than that, I don't know what the yelling's about. In other words, well, Dice is saying... Sat there, and you know what, Howard, when, when, when I do come on your show, and I, you know, I'm going to admit this, that it's stupid not to, and I plug something, it sells a lot of tickets. Yeah, and, that, and believe me, that's not the issue. In fact, Artie, I think what Dice is saying, and I don't know that it's right or wrong. Do you understand this, Ar uh, why is uh, uh, Artie so upset? I really I know why Artie's upset. upset. Wait, I'll I'll tell, I can I clear it all up. You want me to clear it all up? Okay. No, but I, I, want, I, want, I want to tell you another thing. Well, okay. because, he, because first of all, he, ta he said, in the middle of this conversation, right, he well, said he called me this night. That did not happen. Some more, right? You I feel he's lying when he said he called well, you? Well, either that or something wrong with my answering machine. But, I didn't get the message. You well, you know what? I did call you. And if you didn't get it, I don't know why you didn't get it. And I'm not going to have an argument over if it's a lie that I called your machine because I know I called you okay. and left a message. Well, yeah, I have no really? way to prove anything. Do you want me to check the phone records? So, so I'm not uh. looking to fight over that. I, I can't fight. I can't have answering machine fights when people go, oh, I called you. Yeah, but I didn't get it. Well, I can't prove that you did either, so... Uh, or did Neither, so it what, doesn't you matter. you really think Dice wasn't going to pay you? Is that no, what I'm you're gonna, I'll clear it up. Robin, how long do you think I should wait for the money? <laughs> the money sent. A year. Let it go. Yeah. But let me tell you something, Howard. What am I mad about, Robin? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll clear this up. How long do you I, wait for money, Robin? I don't understand that. Dice, allow me to clear this up. All right, but let me, let me just say this, and then you'll clear it up. Okay. After I saw Artie work, okay. And, and I'm man enough to admit Artie was backstage. The minute they heard his name, they started chanting, Artie, Artie, Artie. Right, that's I good. The crowd, you know, was there for him also. Right. So I'm not making believe that they're not into Artie, that Artie can't sell any tickets. I got very excited. I'm going, this is fucking great. This guy really has a following. Yes. Did he sell that show out? No. But did the show come from the serious audience? Yes. So, of course, they know Artie Lang. And they were just as excited to see him as me. So after I see this guy perform, I'm going, this is phenomenal. Let's move forward. Let's do bigger things, okay? All right, we so let me clear this up. Let okay, me clear this up. I think I can help here. Everybody's <laughs> steamed up. I just, yeah, I've never seen yeah. a fight uh, uh, more about nothing. It's no, no, it is crazy. about something. You're wrong. Uh, that it's Howard, about am I crazy? Uh, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, say my I piece. Think you are a little nuts. <laughs> You're right, I'm a little nuts. And first of all, it's got nothing to do with the crowd chant my name, nothing to do with that. I was You're real excited to work with you. I'm not going to No, I know, I know. Dice, listen to me, dude. Listen. Well, why can't you take a compliment? I didn't say nothing wrong when I say they're chanting your name. Uh, and let, let and I'm giving you a compliment by saying it really was thrilling to work with you, but I expect to get paid in a timely fashion. All right, but that was a misunderstanding. All right, let me tell you what happened. All right, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. I got it all down here. I've listened, and I know what's going wrong. I'm glad you paid attention. All right. And and I think if these guys do work together in the future and bigger things happen, um, uh, Artie can expect not to get paid in the future. And that's okay. <laughs> Listen, now here but it he'll is. you'll be getting not paid a lot more money. But, yeah, a lot more money. <laughs> now, listen, let me, let me tell you what happened here. When Artie goes and does shows... He is very used to getting paid that night. In other words, the house received their money. It's a very. It's not like uh, He's some used other business. To the, you know, the cash at the door. Kind the of cash thing. is already there. Everyone gets paid. Even Dice says he got paid half up front and probably got paid that night the other half. Yeah, and the first half I still haven't received yet. All right, because so, that goes to the agent. Right. You know so, how this shit works. So Artie, when he does a show. He the way he operates is if he has a Bob Levy worker with him, he says, Bob, here, I got twenty grand for the night. Here's They're your five. You a check here's your five. Here's this. And I mean five hundred, not five thousand. Right, so right. here's your five hundred. <laughs> and he hands out the money. Now, uh in a in a bigger situation like this, 
Uh, Artie expects the same thing. In other words, okay, if you're not going to pay me that night, let me know. Artie's embarrassed. He's not going to walk up to someone that night and go, where's my money? That's it. It's, it's, it's not but a dignified. But to be this upset, I mean, why is he so upset? But Howard, because he worked. He, he earned the money. The money's in the bank. He wants the money right away. Now, Dice is not lying. Dice, when he runs his business, he kind of gets these guys, the, the opening acts and things, and he says, okay, I'll send you a check. Now, probably, if Artie hadn't brought this up on the air, it might have even waited three or four weeks. And Artie wants to be paid then that uh, night. All right, let me yeah, ask but, you. But what I don't understand guys, is why his agent didn't tell him I called him yesterday and I got the address and the check went out. But Artie feels that happened as a result of the conversation on the of air. Of course well, it, it did. Because it, no, I'll tell you what happened. Because I came home Sunday night from from Vegas. Yesterday was Monday. I got on the phone. I made all my calls to take care of business. And it wasn't until after that... That, that I got this news of what went on on your show yesterday morning. Right. So Artie let feels... Let me ask you, do you think the level of Artie's upset is commiserate with what happened? He seems awfully angry to me. <laughs> Howard, do you think Artie is upset? Do you think Artie is upset because... I'm going to tell you why Artie's upset. How did this upset? conversation start? It started with me being very calm, and then Dice started saying stuff like, he called me in the middle of the week. That no, didn't happen. I have no proof of that, that but it didn't happen. The then he's like saying, I didn't know you needed the money which is Artie, insulting it's yeah, my money that's that where Artie Artie got upset. Okay, Robin, let's, oh, let's go to the tape where Artie, where Artie, where Artie got now upset I'm where Artie got upset and i think this is right like people say hey you don't need the money uh -huh. what do you with the it's not a it's like people have said that to me in my life what do you what do you like i've gone and done yeah, specials but he's not trying to not and done him. work no 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 i know I'm that i'm not trying to get away with the five grand Artie. i don't but, think you are dice that's not my accusation reason, but wait a minute the reason i even called admit you didn't call me to, in the no, middle no, of the week the dude. I even call, I, just admit it you know what if if i didn't call you i wouldn't be afraid to tell you i didn't call you the reason I did call you is because I was staying in Vegas longer than normal, so I was just going to call my accountant and say, send a check. But I didn't have an address to send the fucking check to. I gave you my agent's phone number. But I didn't have that number with me, okay? That's well, I gave it to you at the Borgata. What'd you do with it? I didn't know what I did with it. That's why I wanted to take care of it. But that's why <laughs> These I things don't happen, are call me. All I needed was a call. Now you're saying you didn't get the message? What, am I going to not believe you? I didn't get you know, the middle of the week message. You know, Yesterday, I yeah, I got it. All I know is this, okay? It's much better to align. I don't even know why we're fucking fighting over I don't know. Let's go. Well, I know See, why. why. Artie I feels insulted because people are saying to him, yeah, what's the big deal? It's five grand. It is a big deal. Dice, I was not upset at the beginning of this conversation, nor was I upset yesterday. I just mentioned, you know what? I haven't gotten the money yet. And Howard was like, wow, how I, got, I mean, go to the tape yesterday. Howard was, you were a little surprised that I didn't get the money, correct? I didn't know anything about it. I was surprised. Yeah, you were surprised I didn't get paid yet. You were a little upset yesterday, Artie. Uh, uh, yeah, but not thing, like this. The not after thing this I don't bullshit. need to do is hold back five grand, okay? And why would I want to hold back five grand from a guy who sat in my dressing room and say, all right, why don't we make the move to this place now? And do you know why, Howard? I'm going to tell you. That, the, uh, the Borgata, all right, and this is no bullshit. They got over 11,000 phone calls, and that room was already sold out after I did your show last time. And I was like, fuck this. Why, why do another show at the Borgata when if everything works out with me and Artie, we could go into a giant place? All right, let's hear what the audience has to say about this. Dave, you're on the air. Yes, Dave. Dave, do you want to comment or not? Maybe uh, he changed his mind. Maybe he did. Maybe he's afraid to get in this conversation. It is heated, and there's a lot of aggravation Howie, in the room. Marion. Oh, oh, your friend. Howie, you could call me a cunt all you want, but you know what, Artie? It's a damn shame. <laughs> How could you? First of all, it's all about Howard, both of you, Mr. Dice and Mr. Artie Lang. It's all about Howard. No, it's the not. Thing, the next thing, if any of you weren't there, it's you It's not about me. Artie and Dice are very talented guys. Yes, but you know While what, the Howard, show might help Artie them, they're talented. Helping them get the gigs. But how could Artie bet for $5,000? You talk about just the He's not begging. Artie? He's not begging. It's I his know money. It's your money, but don't you think you could have given a little time to get it? It's like it's a disgrace. It's like embarrassing. I don't think it's a necessary fight. I think you're a very unhappy person. Hmm. I can't understand it, Artie. I wish me and you could go drink coffee together so I could figure this whole thing out. That would cheer me up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Jim. Jim, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, Artie, you way funnier than this motherfucking Andrew dumbass Clay. So. 
You well, have no need for names. Yeah, that's well, not what this is. No need for names. He showed his true colors. We love both these guys. He didn't pay the man. I mean, every, Artie has every right to be mad. So, Artie, you don't need this dude. You can go way further. Andrew was like, go back to acting school. And we'll that's right. A little more. All right, let's go to Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, go ahead. Howard. Yes. Hey, now. Hey, now. Listen, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I really used to like Andrew Dice Clay. And years ago... Like, I'd watch all this stuff. I'd even watch his crappy movies. Why does this have to be an attack yeah, on guys? Why can't a we talk about. Thing. Why can't it. Let the we, guy talk! Right, right, go ahead. You know what? When people have done nothing with their lives. We let Ralph talk! Right. All right. Artie's right. Artie, what is going on with you? I think we've slipped into Artie uh, Psycho Land. So his friend in another car says, oh, I heard you too. Dice, listen. Well, there's saying, nothing to listen about. You're I'm a zero. You know nothing about what you're talking about. I used to be a, you're, I was a big you're a nobody that never did anything and never will. So you can't even believe how it has you on the air now. This is your, I don't know, 60 seconds of fucking fame. You zero in the game of life. That, that's exactly right. That's who you are. That's what I But let the guy, let's, let, let's hear what the guy has to say. No, no, but when a, when a guy starts a conversation, he's not interested in what went on with me and Artie. He's interested in going, oh, I even watched these crappy movies. Right there you go. Yeah, that, that was not fair. Okay. That was not fair. I thought it was kind of fine. Has, have you watched Artie's? Crappy movies. Oh, yeah. Have you watched Artie's crappy movies, sir? Yeah, I watched Artie's crappy movies too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have five crappy movies. Dice only has one. But the bottom line is, is that the only and I know who the guy is. By the way, how's your wife, that fucking pig? The, the one oh, just just talking, you know, because I haven't talked to you for a long time either. How is? All right, let's go to someone who's gonna. Let, let's go to someone else. Nicole, you're you're on the air. Go ahead, Nicole. Morning, everybody. How are you? Hi. Hello? Yes, the, yes, Nicole. Say, hey, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know I'm listening at work. You guys are the best reality show ever, <laughs> and I think <laughs> Dice is a little, um, a little overreacting. I think he really wants to do this thing with Artie, right? And I, you can't blame Artie for not wanting to. He can do it on his own and stuff. And as much as he's an icon, well, you know what? He he's entitled to. But I just thought we had an understanding that we wanted to do more shows. Yeah, but see, I'm. Thinking that you guys yeah. had a conversation right. and Artie agreed to something that Artie wasn't really into agreeing to. I haven't agreed to anything, Robin. <laughs> I agreed to getting five thousand dollars for the show. <laughs> Robin, I said we were talking about doing bigger things. Right. I said Artie, are you in? And he goes, Yeah, I'm in. All right, so that, let's. That's all it was about. But you know what? Let's be stupid about things. Let's not align and do gigantic shows all over the country. Let's just stay separate if that's what you want. Well, this is getting very sad. Steve, go yeah. ahead. I'll give two more people uh, a say in this. Steve, go ahead. Artie, you stupid guinea bastard. Let me tell you something right now. You're not pissed off over the fact that you didn't get paid. You're pissed off for the fact that you didn't get more money when after the show you said, you know what, I should have got more money for that fucking gig. I and don't feel that way. Fucking, no, that's, that's exactly not true. That's how you feel, Artie. That's bullshit. No, that's not true at all. That's no. Bullshit. I just want the money that was offered to me. If he's going to be underpaid, he wants to be underpaid Artie. right away. Let me tell you something. Do you think that Andrew Dice Clay is not going to pay you? Are you kidding me or what? No, no he, sir. Artie I know felt, he's going to pay me, sir. Artie I know. Feels he shouldn't have to. And, 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 and I do, you know, I have sent the check now. That's why I don't understand why we're fighting. Like I keep saying, I'll apologize one more time. If I would have known that, that I'm not going to do it in an antagonistic way. If you wanted that money that night, because we discussed the money, you know, and you said something to me, I just would have had a check cut to bring with me. But I didn't have checks to bring with me. I get paid at... Is that fair, Artie? Is that a fair uh, uh, yeah, statement I mean, from I, Dice? I wasn't looking to no? snub the guy. Would, Artie, why is that not no, fair? No, I mean, I, I expected to get paid. Honestly, I expected to get paid that night, but... But I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. I mean, yeah, maybe he has a different business procedure that you're just yeah, becoming Artie, aware you know, of. I, I started this trip. I did the Mandalay Bay in Vegas. Came back to New York for Borgata, then went to Florida for shows, and then went to back to Mandalay Bay. I, I took care of this on Monday, which was yesterday, and it had nothing at all to do with what you were yelling about on the air. I mean, it's just how I it, wasn't it, yelling about anything. I mentioned it that I didn't get paid yet, and Howard found it surprising that I didn't get paid yet. Yeah, but you know what? Howard didn't do the gig. This was our thing. And you could have called me and left me a message going, Dice, even after a week. No, you said to me you were surprised you didn't right. get paid. Right, we wouldn't have known you hadn't gotten paid unless you brought no, it I up. No, I said I haven't gotten paid yet. Right. If and you were like, did Dice get paid? I'm like, I think so. 
What just I'm saying, asking? Honey, if it bothered yeah. you at all, you could have just left me a message going, Dice, I haven't received my check yet. My yeah. agent called your agent a million right, times. My father dude. is on the phone uh, yes. now. Hello. Could somebody bring some my clarity father, to this? If my father gets on the phone, you know he must be worked up. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Dad, what's happening here? Hello, look. First of all, I'm, I'm exhausted. I've been with <laughs> friends I, with this hot weather. No, I just want to give my two cents. I see two people who have different modes of operation. Right. right. Okay. So that's the whole argument. So one man has one operation and the other guy has another operation. Nobody decided beforehand how, how the operations would gel. So now you find it was a, a mistake because the, one guy didn't know how the other guy felt. So all you have to do, each one of you say, look, in the future, this won't happen. It was a mistake. I'm sorry it happened. I was in uh, business with three other guys, four partners. And if we didn't use this philosophy, uh, we would have never stay. You'd have been like this every day. Now, Dad, when you were in the recording business, I remember people would record, yes. and then some months later they would pay you. Of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a different kind of business. That's not a direct thing. I wouldn't even, you know, uh, you'd. you'd not comparable. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, I, I also don't think it's worth destroying. Uh, the friendship we're building and, and what what went on in that crowd. I mean, that crowd was it was one of the most intense crowds I've been in in front of years, and I do feel it had a lot to be to do with me and Artie together. All right. So this was a instead of fighting, Dad. You're saying this is a difference of business practice. Listen, it, it, just to give you an example. I mean, how how to handle things. Well, the Barry Bonds and Giambi. Giambi went to the <laughs> it went to the. Uh, Caught, he told the truth. The other guy's boozing around in the bush. Now, what what do you have here? Giambi now is a big hero in Yankee Stadium. He's doing great, and nobody's looking to get him. They're not investigating him. So the, the, the whole idea is you got to come forth and say it was a mistake. And, uh, you, and in the future, it's not going to operate that way. With, this is the way it operates. As long as the two of you were successful together, the other thing is chicken shit. Yeah, well, that's how I felt. That's why I, why I keep going. Hey, I'm sorry I didn't realize. Uh, I guess Artie is feeling sensitive because he's the guy still Let without the five thousand dollars, and I understand think, that. Ben, do you think Artie is overreacting? Uh, no, no, I don't. I, I disagree. I don't. You know I why disagree. I don't think Artie's? Uh, let me tell you what my. All right, doing. Artie's not overreacting. He didn't. He did, He wasn't told that this that's is the right. operation that he had. Artie now, has a different way. But, but Mr. Stern, that was not agreed to beforehand. If it was one thing where Dice said. Certainly, Artie. You're going to get your money there that night, and then he stiffed him. Right. That's another situation. Right, right. But nobody talked about it, okay. so Here. Dice wasn't necessarily in the wrong, and neither was Artie. Okay. So it just it, I agree with you on the point that they didn't talk about it. That's the only thing I right. agree about. Well, I think, well, I think well, what your dad's saying now it is, you know, let's put that behind us. Now we, if, That's if we right. do another gig, all right, If you whatever the money is, you get that up front, you know, if that's how you want to get paid, and, and, and we just continue. The point is... That it was so phenomenal. That gig was so phenomenal. It would be stupid for us not to keep going. All right, there, Dad. Thank you. One last thing. One last thing. Yes. I, I'm. A, I believe in the bottom line on any situation. I always trust the bottom line. The bottom line is the future. You two guys, if you both agree, you're great together. You're going to be successful together. That's important. Well, Artie stuff. doesn't want to be Artie together. Is, Artie doesn't that's like this. Oh, that's a whole other listen, thing. Listen, listen. Artie, Artie, go ahead. Here, here's here's the point. If you get, we know a lot of comedians. Get them on the phone. See how the comedy business works. I uh, want to know. Let me do that for you. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know how long they've waited for checks. Right, after let's, Dad, thank you. Da I have Dad. never seen this much craziness Dad, over the check. Audie, Audie, I th you're right. I mean, this is this is ludicrous. It shouldn't be that. That's why I said it's an overreaction. There's something else here. Yeah. No, no. You see, if he's operating in, in a ludicrous way, that that's not satisfying to you. He's wrong, and you also. And don't accept his way of operating, so you're wrong. So in other words, it's past that point. Right. Listen, I'm, I, I'm admitting, I'm not, I'm not going to make anything up. Nothing was discussed. I never said to Dice, look, I expect this money tonight. He never right. promised right. that to me. But we're in the same business, and I'm saying there's sort of, I've been doing comedy a long time. You get paid usually, if not that night, within a couple of days so it's been 10 days and right, this conversation uh, started with me going dice when am i going to get the check and then as it rolled on dice claimed he made a phone call which yeah. i didn't get a, wait, you wait, know wait, wait, wait say that again i miss that all right wait let me hang up on my phone uh. dad dad thank you <laughs> okay I, i'm getting off all right thank you 
I, I, I hear what Artie's saying. He wants, he's saying it's common practice in the comedy business to be right. paid that night or within two or three days. But maybe Dice has a different operation. No, 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 it's not even this. a different operation. If I have, you know what, if I, if I have, like, just a, a regular opening act, okay, which I don't consider Artie, and right. I didn't consider him, once again I'm saying this, as an opening act. He wasn't considered that way. We had a guy, we had a... The boy Jameson open. If I got a guy like that, Jameson doesn't get close to what I paid Artie. So I right. just take care of him. All right, listen. We can't go on with this all day. I'm sorry you guys have this going on. Artie, I understand from Dice what he's saying. Your check is in the mail. Right. That's it. Yeah. It was handled. It's handled the day I came off. Dice, it would be great if the check would bounce. But Artie yeah. feels insulted phenomenal. some way. No, no, no. I don't feel insulted. Out. I feel he's Artie's not admitting Artie's to Artie's he's not admitting Artie's to lying that he called me in the middle of the week. Listen, everything went so good, and, and and you're turning something that went so good into something bad, and it shouldn't be. No, no, no. I'm not turning this into anything bad, Dice. All I Wait, asked at the beginning was, I way. haven't gotten paid yet. When am I getting the check? And then a conversation started, and a couple of things happened in that conversation. Right, that got me answer angry. is, your check is coming within a day or two. But I'm calmed down again. Uh, I right. do. Right, here's, so here's the answer. But the big eye opener is, for the last four years, I've sat down with my agent. I did 5,000 people in Philly once, and I said, listen, yeah. how do we get Ralph Sorella to a gig? Oh, <laughs> it how do we get Ralph to come? Uh, Ralph, you uh, seem to have really ticked Artie off woo. more than anything. I think I figured it out now. What? Here's the problem. The reason, and I think everybody agrees, Artie is overreacting. Robin's saying it, Fred's saying it, but you're going to attack me. That's okay, Artie. I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. I think Artie needs distractions in his life to make himself miserable, whether he's fucking up his relationship with Dana, <laughs> whether he's eating himself to death, whether he's getting mad that he didn't get five grand. He needs something to be upset and distracted. He was Ralph, how much longer should I wait for the hundred dollars you owe me? You're going to be waiting forever. I know. Of course I will. <laughs> and what we just is, have wait, to accept the that? fact that... What is with that, Ralph? Why do you owe him 100 bucks and you're not paying him? Uh, Artie put in a bet for me. I lost the bet. I lost the bet. You owe him 100 bucks. I, I lost the bet with Will, too. And I said, Will, just pay him the money because I wasn't... The will, seat. please come in here. Please come in here. Why should Will have to be responsible for your no, debt? I'm going to go ask Artie, Will, who hardly Artie, makes I'll any money. The, the... Artie, I'll be in Thursday. I'll pay you Thursday. Okay? <laughs> Good evening, uh, all right, so that's... Two years. As well. You know, uh, you want to answer it? It's crazy to me. I, I, I got to be honest. Just listening to this whole thing. Well, I don't understand why you couldn't just call me and go, you know, I didn't get my check yet. I did call you. My agent called your agent. I knew you were on the road, and I was on the road, so I figured the agents the would deal with it. The answer to well, your you question, let's get control. back to it. Your, the answer to Artie's question as to when he is going to be paid is, I would estimate that if Dice sent the check yesterday, I don't know if he How was it, it sent? It. <laughs> How was it sent, Dice? Who cut it? I called my accountant, and I said, cut a check to this guy, and get the, and I get, first I got the agent's number. I called the accountant. I said, this is his agent's number. What is it, Colin? Uh, uh, am I right with the, the, his first name? Yeah, Colin? right, right. Colin. Okay, all right. So you at least know I know that. I said, this is his name. Call him up now and send the check. All right, so the I, check. I, I so you know, found the number that you I lost. The road manager. I also Dice, said, Dice, you told me you lost the agent's number. What's that? You told me you lost my agent's number. Where'd you get it from it again? It the agent's number, and I went through a million papers that I got on the road. It was written on a little piece of paper. I found it, and I called my accountant. What is this, a fucking murder trial? No, you're lying, Dice, <laughs> and, and you're oh backpedaling. Oh I have no reason to lie. What, what is wrong with you? Well, why would you? Why would you say you said you lost my agent's number? Yes, I lost the little piece of paper you wrote, and then you found it again. As you know, when you're on, would you pray to Saint Anthony? You collect all kinds of papers, okay? So I went through all of them. I'm wearing my medal. Maybe he used this. You know what? But yesterday was also the first time I'm even hearing about this. Ross Zapin wants to come in and defend you, guys. Good. Let's bring him in then. All right, let's hear what he has to say. Oh, who? Uh, hey, this Artie, is this, this is, is crazy. This is what happens sometimes. For a hundred dollars. Well, I'm here to defend both of you guys. I think the biggest mistake here was you guys are talent. You both have you done shows before. Your representative should have called his representative he, and kept the two of you out of but it. But Ross, they did. My agent called his. My okay. agent. Okay. But you want to know something? You also, let me tell you this, Artie, and it's something I won't discuss on the air. There are some problems right now with my particular agent, so I haven't even talked to him. Okay. He actually did call me yesterday, and I didn't call him back yet because of something else going on. 
Okay, which has nothing to do with you. All right, well, we well, all get into that. Ross, Ross, I, Rush, said, Rush, so I want I to believe. I got to say this. I believe your agent called him. I just haven't talked to my guy yet. I okay? Ross, Ross, in the Aiken. meantime, without any of that. I still called my accountant, and I took care of all my bills and all the guys I had to pay. Ross say, but I want to thank you for nothing. You clarified nothing. No, 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 but I, I made the point. But let, let me go back. But if, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this about Ross. See, Ross, I talked to Ross, and I told Ross how incredible <laughs> that show went, and he was happy to hear it because he was even smart enough to go, you know what? You two teaming up is an incredible... He was but, even smart enough? But wait I a second. I, I just want to roll back. I've never heard that before. Wait, I want to hear And Ross, uh, who are you again? <laughs> I'm nobody. Ross, who are you again? Just so people know. Uh, well, what is your title here? Um, Vice President of Promotions of Emory. All right, so this is a guy who knows something about it. But no, but, but I have... To, my, my previous history was I booked dice when I worked for a concert promoter, and I've been in the business. Now, I, I, I know you're you closer know to it. Howard, I'm going to say this, just to let people know who Ross is. When I first came into New York, before I ever even did your show, okay, uh, before I even went on your show ever for the first time, I'm talking years ago, Ross was the first guy to bring me into New York and put me in contact. All right, absolutely. Was with Ron All right, That's this right. is a man who knows. All right, listen, here, let me, let me right, sum so this here, up. Let me, so wait, I got to get out of this for a second. So let me sum it up. Let me sum it up. I think I can help. I don't think you can. No. No, I, I think I can. Can't be done. Help, let me Artie help. feels like he's responsible for no. the show. Artie has a way of doing business. It's like my father said. Artie has a way of doing business. He's been in the club, the nightclub business for his whole life, uh, ever since he stopped being a long But this was a minor mistake. <laughs> he is <laughs> acting as if I, 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 no. killed his I it's not a minor mistake. He, he, he understands it was a different way of doing business, but he feels what's compounded it is a series of statements that is infuriating him. Ugh. I think he. I think he had an extra grind. Am before, I right, Artie? Before this even happened. Fred's no, right. no. Honestly, Fred's Fred, right. I didn't. Artie I, I was to very be, calm at the beginning. Thought that I, he I, should be paid. You want to know something? Here's three things. Number one, I think Artie thinks he was underpaid. I think no, I don't think that's it. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. That. That's Let's number one. Finish. Number two, I think. He thinks he sold it out. Dice has a different opinion. Yeah, I don't think number that's three, it. the third compounding factor is he didn't get paid. So if he, that's if all he thinks is. he's underpaid and he thinks he sold it out and he didn't get paid, right. he's coming in with an axe to grind. Right. And I have one question for Artie. When Dice asked you that day to do the gig, right. were you actually happy that he asked you or did you feel like you were put on a spot and you didn't know how to say no? No, I, I told I was happy to work with him. But absolutely. Did you have any misgivings about doing it, especially since you had another gig coming up and it was kind of bad timing? The scheduling was a problem, but no, I I would love I, the, I love the, the opportunity to work with him. No, definitely, okay. I was happy but, to work. But with him. it was also a great opportunity to see how that show came off, right? Yeah, right but, yeah, it was and, it and was the great. Show came off phenomenal. I don't now, think now the you're problem. The I think Fred is wrong. The problem is I already expected to be paid that yelling. night. But no, shouldn't that been communicated think... up front? Yes, yeah. it was a miscommunication. I, yeah, you're right. I did. That was not. I did not Artie communicate that. Artie thinks that that's no. something that should be known. It's not something you need to teach. Uh, not even that. But should Artie have to? But should Artie have to communicate that to Dice? Should Artie's agent have said up front, "Hey, this is what the deal is"? Artie thought that that's something that comics know. That's what he that's thought. That's ridiculous. But Dice has been but doing ridiculous. Where, it is ridiculous. Doing it's, it's, it, it's a misunderstanding between two guys. And but, then to carry then, on like this. No, it's compounding <laughs> because things are being said. What's be? I, I, uh, okay, let me ask you a question. What really got me mad was Dice said he called me in the middle yeah. of the week. That, and he that, did. But he says he did. Is he going to lie about it? I'll tell you what's stupid. I'll tell you what's stupid. See, we're having an argument today, Artie. And when I left that gig, all I'm thinking of is where do we go next? What's the bigger venue we play, okay? Now, of course, we could both do our own gigs separately, but you, you there? Yeah, where, no, where, where, where would I go? <laughs> He's left. Right, no, because I'm on the fucking phone, okay? <laughs> but this is what happens, and I don't know who put anything in your ear. This is what I spoke to Howard when I first right. came in about our fight, that other people get in between shit and say shit, and by the time we even hooked up today, we're both fucking yelling. That's what happens, and it's bullshit. So if I'm telling you I called you, I called you. And if you didn't get the message, I'm sorry you didn't get the message. But the bottom line is, I'm at least man enough I say, you know what? If I knew you wanted it that night, it would have been handled. I didn't know it. I took care of it like I always do at the end of a trip. I take care of all my business. I always have with anybody that's ever worked for me. I've never had any problems. What's going to be fucked up 
is if we don't do more shows because then other people out there go, look at this, they did one fucking show and, and it falls the fuck apart. All right, look, That's look, we got to move up. on, guys. Now, I'm. But when you're sitting there on the phone also and going, yeah, you want me to do the shows because I'll plug them. Of course I want you to plug them. Who the fuck should I hire? Some guy that just got on a Catch a Rising Star and did three minutes? You want two guys that could go out there because I'm not looking to do Borgata. I'm looking to do the biggest fucking stadiums in the country. And I turned around to you after that show and I said, I want you to do it with me. That's what's fucked up if you don't. Not the 5,000. The 5,000 is fucking chicken feed compared to what you're going to be fucking making. Now, you could do these fucking clubs and make whatever you make for a weekend, or you could go to the very fucking top. You know what's happened since that show? My fucking show got picked up. I got offered a show on Showtime. Then I say, you know who I want on the show with me? Artie fucking Lang. That's the only Thanks. name I put out there. All right. I'm well, there it show. is. Uh, no, but I'm telling you. Uh, how would this what, what, I, uh, I, 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 I am sad. I am sad that it's gotten... You know, I think it, I Dice think has convinced me. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I I'll, whenever I get the check, I'll be fine, man. <laughs> Artie says you can send it whatever you want. Don't Dice. even send the check. Dice. As a matter of fact, I don't want the money. Wait, Dice. And, and Ralph, I don't want the hundred either, because you know what? I don't need it. Right. I don't need it. I, I didn't need the money I made at the Pittsburgh Funny Bone either, but you know what? I took it. I said, what the fuck? Yeah. Why'd you take that? I don't know. <laughs> why, did the, why did the guy in Pittsburgh write me a check that night? I go, you know what? I don't need this money. Put it in your account for a month. If you right. wanted a different, why do we got to keep rehashing that when we can move so far forward? Right. Yeah, we're going to do Dice, such big things. Dice. I'll be on your Showtime show and we'll play Giant Stadium in November. That'll exactly. be great. Good, and okay. what do you think? It's not going to happen? <laughs> Dice, I, don't, I, don't I want you to Dice. And Howard, Howard knows how I am because we're both fucking goal driven. Dice. What? When you come back to New York, you come in here, we'll have face to face. You guys break be able to a little come. bread. You guys will break bread. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, break I'm not mad at him. I just don't understand what this. Uh, who I knows? Why you felt like uh, you, you were expecting it that night? Okay, so I fucked that up. Not even that night. Uh, maybe Monday. Maybe okay, Tuesday. All right, here's high pitch, you Eric. Sound like a high guy pitch, from the Here's high pitch, Eric. Let's see what. He maybe that's what I am, Robin. I don't come from much. I'll admit it. Maybe I'm a simpleton. All right, let's I like go to, to get paid. Let's go to high pitch, Eric. <laughs> I'm not M Night Shyamalan's kids with creatures yes, in the pool. Uh, yes, high pitch, Eric. Hey, but, who? Hey, Andrew Dice Clay. How are you? Who? What'd you just say, Howard? Hi, Pitch Eric. Oh, hi. Hi, Pitch Eric. Listen, you're a fucking dick. You're a cock fucking Oh, this oh, guy's please. got nothing to stand on. Yeah, he's just got nothing to stand on. Well, if someone calls up to defend me, Dice will just go, Wait, Who are you? Isn't, isn't this the guy that rips off uh, limo drivers? I'll listen to a guy. Who are you, you zero? You know, what, what, no, that guy started off the conversation just pissing on me. Why, right. Why should I fucking That wasn't fair. That, that wasn't fair. That well, that's not yeah. fair. Well, they shouldn't well, piss on you either. you could say something if you don't like what's being right. said. No, no. The, I am, and when, apparently I'm overreacting. <laughs> right. You know what's happening? It's getting it's getting blown out. It's crazy. Agree to disagree. I, think, I haven't liked a lot of things that have been said, and when I say something, I get married every month and go, you an unhappy person. <laughs> What's that, that guy doing with anything? <laughs> God, annoying cunt. Look, right, guys, look. listen. Whenever I get the cash, it's fine. Um, and that's it. And I'm sorry to have expected the money within 10 days. That was my mistake. I want to know if you spoke to your agent. I speak to my agent almost every day. That's not the question. About what? Yeah, I talked to my agent. I said, You spoke to him yesterday. When I got to Pittsburgh, I called my agent and no, said, no, Listen, no, no. Dice wasn't call? able to pay me Friday. Could you, you call his agent and, and find out answer. what's going on? That's why, what happened. Why can't you hear the question and give a straight answer? What? Go ahead. Did you talk to your agent yesterday? Yes. Did he tell you he had a long conversation with me? He told me he talked to you, yeah. And did he tell you what it was about? He didn't get into details because it was late at night. He told me he talked to you, and he told me that you were going to cut a check. Maybe, maybe you should talk to him and get into it with him and not be so mad at me because I'm... You, you, I'm not you, mad at you. Yeah. Well, what was the yelling about? Happiness? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sound like no, You're saying things that are, like, a little confusing. No, no, no I, I will tell you this. He called me, left me a message Sunday night, said, hey, I'm back in town, give me a call. Right. I know for a fact, from the day he came to do the show here to the Borgata, 
to Florida, back to Vegas, back to LA. He was not in town. He just got home. He right. just got home Sunday night. He called yesterday. Coincidence that you happened to come up in a conversation yesterday, didn't get paid? I doubt it, but okay, maybe. But he just got back to town and he was writing you the check yesterday. In fact, I told him to just send the paper bag here with $5,000 cash. All right, right. Well, listen, listen. <laughs> now I gotta get on a plane to throw him. All right, listen, no, no, guys, I just, so, guys, so thank nice. you. If you had gone on a three month trip to India, Artie. would I have gotten my money in three months? I got your money sooner than that. It would have took two months. <laughs> All right, here's no, a. Come on, why can't we put this bond? Let's come put on it now. You want, it's anyone... bond. He now knows what you expect. I listen. I just admitted I'm wrong. You're right in this whole thing. I'm sorry for bringing it up. All right, so we're doing the gig or what? <laughs> what gig? <laughs> the gig. There's no gig on the books right now. All right, listen. You Can two you better... talk about the gig? I want you guys to talk about this in person, not right, not on will, the phone. We will. But All right. Did you get my message yesterday? <laughs> did you? Did he, yes did or he no. call you yesterday? Yeah, did I? Call yeah, you, you did. Call, you called me yesterday. Yeah. So why didn't you call me back? Because I thought it'd be funnier to do this on the air. <laughs> no, I didn't want to talk to you about. I would have talked to you about this on the air, but what? I had other things I had to know yesterday. Like what? What I do you want to know? I can't talk about it on the air. All right. <laughs> All right, Jessica Heim. What do you want to add to this? Oh, me, Howard. I think guys, you are so full of crap. You call Artie in the middle of the night when you're on Ativan. Suddenly you can't call him. Artie just wants to get paid, and you get not Ativan. Whatever. And you're well, well, why don't you have your facts straight? <laughs> no, if you know <laughs> why, why, guys, what were you on? Here's where dice cuts off, people. Yeah, that we're trying to defend. Uh, Ambient. What's the big deal? He wants to get paid. He did a gig. Just did you listen to the whole conversation, honey? Full of crap. You go through these long speeches about how big you are and how Artie didn't sell seats. Yeah, and and, and who am I even? Talking to here, What's Jessica Hahn. Somebody with tits thinks they got a brain all of a sudden. You knew Sam Kennison was a better comic than you ever were. Well, what are we bringing? Oh, you know what? I love Kennison. <laughs> all right. All right. Listen, Dice. Again, okay, let's not attack Dice. That's not what this is about. Yeah, no, that's not. No, not we shouldn't about. attack you, and we shouldn't attack Dice. No, this is a money. Did already get attacked? Artie. All right. No one attack me. I don't say anybody attack me. But he puts these dummies on. All right, can I say something? I'm not in charge of the phones. Can I say I something? Who's in charge of the phone? Can I say something? Yeah. Artie. I love when it gets quiet. <laughs> yeah, I know. It scares me. It's, 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 what, what, it's, it's beautiful. Like Artie. I, I think it's insulting that you want any money. I agree, sure. with him, Howard. I agree with him, man. You know what, Howard, he he really, it I don't need the five money. grand. You really You're right, don't. I don't need it. You live in Jersey by yourself. You don't even have a girlfriend anymore. I got enough money. I'll take the money. I got a lot of money. Yeah, I got yeah, enough I, money. I understand where he's coming from, Howard, and it... To me, it's just miscommunication. No, uh, Dice, I'm going to settle this. Artie, you owe Dice three grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it to you next week. All right, now, you know, the money's coming. It's, you got ten days. Yeah, the money will be there this week, obviously. All right, that's good. And, and, and then, and, and, and then you guys will discuss your relationship moving forward. Actually, before you mail it, I'll be in L.A. tonight. I'll come get it for him. Are you really going to be here tonight? <laughs> I'll be there tonight. Yeah. Where are you going to be? I'll be at a hotel Show in, the in uh, Hollywood. Announce where you'll be what so everyone can come see. What do you want me to tell you? Huh? No, if you're going to be here, I need to see you. <laughs> well, I'll be working the whole time I'm there, but you can. No, no, but I need to see you. <laughs> well, come where I'm working, then. Do you want to be paid up front for that? <laughs> How no, much to you. see you? Hello, uh, Artie you is shooting. You're coming, you're coming in for that entourage. Yes, right. Right. Artie right. is shooting an episode of Entourage. Right. We can't. I, not on the set. Yeah. All right. if I come to the set, it creates mania. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to steal Artie's <laughs> moment? Yeah, I don't. You know, you, you know, Howard, you, you know. Howard understands. All right. Kind of All right. Listen, I, I'm going to let you guys. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm the asshole. Yeah. Right. I'm I the got guy it. I got to take a break. You finally came to your sense. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Artie yeah. admits he's an asshole. I, I admit yeah. this was so, this was completely out of line. How man. dare you? <laughs> All right, but when you come in, serious, I want you right. to call me. That'll be good. You guys will get. You're going to call Dice call. when you get to LA. That's all. Yeah. I'll, I'll guys, call thank you, Dice. Dice okay. Clay. Thank you, Andrew Dice Clay, the great Andrew Dice Clay, the great Artie Lang. Thank you very much. All right. Bye bye. All right. Oof. <laughs> it's good you owe dice money now. <laughs> I hope he doesn't need it. That was beautiful. Well, you take your time paying it back. That was fucking beautiful. You guys are crazy. <laughs>
was from Procter and Gamble. I know. I said, where's McDonald's? Where's you know uh, Pepsi? Right. To me, simply, simply great, great porn. Dot com does a better service for the what McDonald's does. I'm sure. By the way, Howard TV has done 615 shows in a year. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So we we offer a lot. They of are uh, on some kind of dare. Yeah. What I love about the Howard TV thing is with the E! Show, because it was, you know, a limited amount of time, it was just guests. Howard TV has full segments of us just yeah, bullshitting yeah. about interesting subjects. I think the fans love that aspect of yeah, it. It's, it's fun. It's really cool. Uh, Lisa G's here with headlines from the Howard 100 News, and then uh, I've got about a million things to go over with you. But uh, here's Lisa G. <laughs> Hello. What's up in the newsroom, Lisa? Uh, we're going to tell everyone what went down in New Hampshire over the weekend <laughs> with Artie Lang. How'd it go and the Dice Man? Uh, yeah, I'm going to well, bring that up. How'd that go? Now, here's what I heard. Because the email, I, I did not hear the broadcast Saturday night on Howard 101 at, was it 9 o'clock, Art? I think it started at 9. Yeah, yeah. Nine About o'clock. 9 o two, maybe, something like that. Uh, this is what I know, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, Artie did a show with Dice. Artie did a limited sort of thing on stage. It was really more of a Dice show, I guess. I, what happened was I introduced the broadcast. I said, I came out, I did about a half an hour of time, and then at a half an hour mark, they said, we're on the air. And I said, hey, guys, we're on Sirius. And the place loved that we were on Sirius. I said, you know, say hi to Howard. He might be listening. And they, they went nuts. And I did about five minutes more material, and then I brought Dice up. That's right. what happened. So then Dice did an hour, like a four, uh, 45 minutes about. You know. So then, for, judging from uh, what Artie's told me in the email, a dice went up on stage and got into fights with the audience. <laughs> what? And I thought it was very entertaining. I mean, the, the people were, well, what was going on? Tell, tell, tell me the, the skinny. Give me the skinny, the scoop. Well, again, is this it? is a venue I've played before. And the last, it's 2,000 seats, about 60 miles east of Boston. And this is, uh, it's stern country. That's the best way to put it, man. It's like, um, they, uh, they're blue collar Boston people. They're great fucking fans. They're hardcore into the show. So, uh, when I left the stage, you know, they were sort of yelling out my name a little bit. And then when Dice went up, uh, uh, they they, they weren't as receptive control. as they could have been. Because, right. I don't know, I think people's, people were yelling out, like, pay Artie, like that dumb fight we had. Right. And I said at the end of my set, I said, look, he paid me. He's a great guy. This guy's a legend and everything. So he goes up, and he I thought he, he did an amazing bit about sex in the city. He had him. But there were still a lot of drunk, crazy motherfuckers who just kept yelling out my name. <laughs> and they wouldn't stop. And he got distracted by that, and he got so mad at these people that he berated them in what I thought was a hilarious manner and got into fights with them and threw some people out. Well, uh, I tell you, I, I, the email was not positive. Yeah. Oh. And, and Tim just said to me, do you think we should replay it at midnight tonight? I said, yeah, yeah do it, because people probably missed it. Uh, here's I'll read you the email. I didn't hear the broadcast. Right. All I heard were the boos. Dice Clay was horrible. Uh, number two, that Dice show was such a train wreck Saturday night. Artie was good during his all-too-brief appearance, but the only entertaining thing about Dice's set was hearing the audience giving him a rash of shit during his weak, tired set. Dice should hang it up, and Artie should run as far away from any comedy partnerships with Dice as fast as he can. <laughs> Giant Stadium? Ha, ha, ha. I don't think so. Uh, number three, I'm listening to the Dice Show live on Saturday night. He sucks. Holy shit, he's not the least bit funny. He had two people kicked out after breaking their balls. The crowd is obviously chanting for Artie, and all Dice is doing is sounding like an asshole getting booed. He does not belong on stage, let alone serious. Please, this is the worst. I definitely need to change the channel, but it's like seeing an accident. You can't look away from it. Wow. But we just put it on there, man. You don't know, you've got two channels. Uh, you've got hundreds of channels to choose from. Dice Clay was horrible. He's old, and it's over. Such a sad set and a waste of your valuable channel. Please never have him on again. Uh, Dice Clay was horrible. It was a classic bomb. Uh, gee, you want to hear more? <laughs> I've been a serious subscriber for over a year now and have become a huge fan of the show. I'm disappointed that Artie went, on, Artie went on for about five minutes to open the Dice concert and that Dice is absolutely fucking horrible. He's telling the same terrible jokes and stories that I heard 15 years ago. Get a life, you piece of shit. And thanks for wasting my Saturday night. The only good thing was that Artie got paid in advance. <laughs> Um, I mean, do you ever hear? This is unbelievable. It's painful. I'm pretty sure that Dice ended his career tonight. His act was horrible. If Artie and Dice come to Phoenix, they should give an option to buy a half ticket so I could see Artie and save my money on the oh, other asshole oh, face. Oh, oh. The only reason I listened to the whole set was because it had to be on the last show ever cast over Sirius. <laughs> 
Uh, there are hacks on Raw Dog that are ten times more funny. Tell Dice next time he wants to have a show, have a fucking act. Wow. All right, can I just defend Dice a little bit here? First of all, I, I mean, it, I... I love our fans. They're just the best, most loyal fans in the world. And I, I think that they felt that yelling out my name was in some way supporting this show. And Dice is a friend of the show. And, you know, it was a broadcast on Sirius. And Dice went out. When you listen to it back, he did, I thought he did a really funny original bit about, you know, Dice's take on the show Sex in the City. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was original and great. But what happened was there were some people who just wouldn't shut the fuck up. You know, oh, you know and who wants to hear that no comic wants to hear that especially over punch lines and what happened was he got into a major fight with people and berated them in what i thought was an entertaining way but on the radio it must have just sounded like dice fighting with the crowd uh, let's see if we can't uh, find a couple of clips here before lisa g goes on with her news uh, here's dice clay uh, this is already introducing dice so let's go back to the night saturday night live on the radio here <laughs> i never heard this i got a special treat for you guys tonight is a very special night because i'm working with a legendary comedian. By the way, when we mic a uh, concert... Well, I put it on Artie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, like, put the mic... You gotta get, Doesn't it sound like we're listening through the PA system? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell you. Where's our engineering staff? I want to hit him over the head with a hammer. I gotta tell you, this yeah. is the first time I'm hearing this, and my God, that sounds... You can be, it sounds like we're yelling. Yeah, right. I think the audience had better mics. Which, again, in defense of Dice, is not helping his situation. the street? Is that what's going on? He's now yelling to be yeah. So you got to, again, Dice, that's not and helping Dice. You know what? Actually, it's not a good thing because if he didn't pay me, I was going to stay here and drink with you motherfuckers till I did get paid. I'm going back to Boston, guys. I'm staying in Samuel Hall. I'll be bar hopping all night, so don't worry about that. Which was true. But I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. With the first ever live concert by a legendary comedian, one of my fucking heroes, Andrew Dice Clay is going to come out in a bit. All right, so thank you for coming out to support us. We'll see you in a bit with Dice Clay on Sirius Satellite Radio. Come out. All right, so there's Artie's intro. Now, let me... Let me give See, a now, you, at that point, I had already done a half an hour of shit. Right. So I don't know what they thought I was going to stay on for, like, another hour or something. Right, this this clip says, Dice Clay, crowd chants Artie. So that can't be easy for Dice no. in his defense. No. <laughs> but that's what you do today. That, you see, that's what people, guys actually do that today. They actually shave their balls. This is where you've taken things, asshole people. What you get shitty seats, assholes. Oh, what you people! I think we got a couple of dice fans here tonight. I've heard the dice, dice, dice chant many a time. You know uh -oh. what I mean? I want to hear the dice chant now. Uh oh. All right, now this side of the room, Artie, Artie, Dice, 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 He should just change his name to Artie. Maybe that's the fag section. I'm talking about banging chicks now. They're a little bored. See, I was a little upset he called my fans fags. That's terrible. <laughs> it sounded good, though. I mean, it sounded entertaining. Listen, it was kind of interesting. I, again, it, it was. It was interesting. And believe me, a, 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 guy, a comic not as good as him would have left the stage. I mean, he just he berates these people in a funny way, I thought. But okay. I didn't realize the audio was that sort of, you know. Here, of here's that, that didn't sound too bad, though. Yeah, Dice. I can hear Dice a little better than I could hear you. Yeah, yeah but, the, but when we tape concerts, we got to get our team in there that knows what they're doing. <laughs> We must have had Heckle and Jekyll tape in that. I'll get to the bottom of that. Hey, Tim, what happened on the tape there? 
You should be able to hear the uh, comedian a little better. I wish you could hear Dice's right. first bit when he walked out. He, he was doing a sex in, the, sex in the City thing, and he kept mispronouncing Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> I thought that was funny the way he did. Well, that uh, Sarah P uh, Parker. <laughs> well, let's let's uh, that's funny. Let's let's replay it tomorrow or tonight yeah. at midnight. Replay it tonight. It's gonna be Howard. It's Wednesday at midnight. What's today? Uh, Monday. We have, we have um, inside the Point Actor Studio. Then after that is the Andy Dick Show. Oh, yeah, the shit show returns tonight at midnight. Oh, it does. Uh, 7 p.m. is inside the Porn Actor Studio, and it's supposed to be a real good one. Tomorrow's Jackie's Joke Hunt. I have to say, Richard does a great job of pretending to be James Lipton. Yeah. I love that. It's, Very good. it's a good show. I listened to it one night and had a good time. <laughs> uh, midnight was supposed to be Riley Martin tomorrow night, but you're saying you're going to... No, no, we'll do, it on, we'll do uh, the concert uh, that uh, Artie and... Dice did on Wednesday night at midnight Eastern. What are you going to do about the sex connection that's supposed to be on? We'll put uh, Artie on. You put Artie on? And uh, Dice. Okay. Sex connection. And what happened to Riley? Is Riley going to be on? Riley's on Tuesday night. Oh, okay. At I got to night. say, the other aspect of this whole thing, which made it even more of a circus, was... com for local listings. This right. was Dice's finale of his VH1 show. Oh. He had an entire... I had to sign a big release, so he oh, had a whole no. VH1 crew. Well, look, they can edit well, if it. They, if they they'll, show that, that's interesting. Yeah, they'll edit it however they want, but... It's funny, like, four different people came up to me, and they, they sound so surprised. They go, God, these people really like you. <laughs> I go, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm sort of the king of the drunk losers. <laughs> All right, so tonight at midnight, it's Andy Dick, the shit show. Tomorrow night at midnight, it's Riley Martin. Nice, huh? Hey, wow. You know what? Is that Dan the song, Brady? Uh, uh, Dan, Dan, stellar work. You know what else? They, Sam they were... broke his fingers uh, trying to do that drum part. <laughs> you know what else they were doing at the gig the other night, Howard, that you would have loved that I wish maybe they would have got some on tape? When I, right before we went on air, I said, hey, guys, Howard might be listening, so let them know, you know, you love Sirius and everything, and they went nuts, and uh, a lot of them were trying to do the, uh, the Grandma Caprio. <laughs> No one can do that impression. Hey, we kept going like, oh, the Dean. <laughs> oh, you have got to get off of the heroin and win back a Dean. She might have said, is so important to your life. She might have said that exact first sentence for me. <laughs> get off of the heroin. He's a perfect body. He, he's shaped like a meatball. I fed him so many meatballs, he looks like a one. You know what I'm lobbying for? Sam Simon's next sitcom should be the Grandma Cafe. Uh, <laughs> Hello, my Artie. <laughs> and Artie plays Grandma Cafe. You know what? I'm going to wheel her in here one day on like a crane or something, and you're going to see what a lovely woman she is. She speaks Let me up. tell you something, Artie, and you know I love you. But to find a nice girl who's going to love a fat the fuck like you no. is impossible. <laughs> Now you get on that photo right now, Artie Lang, and you call Miss <laughs> Dana and take a shave. She speaks in a beautiful Nork accent. <laughs> Artie, I just got a call from Grandma. Hi, this is Dana. Yeah. I just got a call from Grandma Caprio who said you need to talk to me about something. Yeah. Uh, what is it? That's all I need. You two Yentas on the phone. Artie, you tell her. I'm on the other line coaching you. We're a conference call. <laughs> tell her you're not on the heroin no more. You're a good boy. Uh, hey. I'm not on heroin anymore. <laughs> oh, Artie, I'm so happy. Tell her you love her dog. Oh, come on, Grandma Caprio. <laughs> Tell her no. Did she? She also. She did comment on the the dice thing once. She said, "Did that guy pay you?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." Never mind. Like, Shut up, or you go, you 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 go, 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 cuisine. Cuisine. Whatever. Well, you, you, uh... Cuisine. Cuisine. Tell her you're no more on the China White. No more China White for my Artie. Tell her, Artie. Hey! I'm not on the heroin no more. Tell her you're not on the heroin no more. Tell her you're not on the he
I'm not on the train of white no more. <laughs> oh, Artie, that's so wonderful. Tell her you love her dog. I think you and, I think you and Fred should do dueling Artie's. I hear Fred. Uh... Hey, I love your dog. Oh, Artie, I'm more in love than ever. You're doing good, Artie. <laughs> you're selling the Mercedes and buy an IROC. <laughs> hey, I'm buying an IROC. Oh, Artie, you're the perfect Italian boyfriend. <laughs> My last car almost was a Monty SS. I... Uh. Artie, I love you. Thank you, Day. And thank you, Grandma Caprio. Artie, I'm here knitting you a beautiful wedding goopaline. Uh. <laughs> a wedding goopaline? I ain't wearing no goopaline to my wedding. Shut up at the Jews who wear a yarmulke. You wear a goopaline. <laughs> Right, no more of that. You know what a goopaline is? I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's Goopaline. In Godfather 2, when Frankie Pantangeli's brother comes from Italy to sit in court. <laughs> He's wearing the goopaline. He's got a goopaline. <laughs> For God's sake, so when you go out there with a the Dane, get the shit stains out of your underwear. You're bringing your underpants over to a Grandma Caprio's house. Uh, Grandma Caprio better give Dana her meatball recipe That's if right. she wants Dana to go. Me and my Woman led such a hard life to end like this with you making fun. <laughs> Poor Grandma Caprio. But yeah, the, the, the fans did love that. They all had their own <laughs> camera. <laughs> Grandma Caprio. Ralph, you're on the air. A goopaline. A goopaline. Hey, it's an actual word, Ralph. What do you want me to tell you? Audie, I got a summer for you. You heard that, Sorella. You you heard it before. I never I never heard a goopaline. What the fuck is that? All right, whatever. Um. Hey, so, Howard, did you play the part of the show where Dice, uh, like, had a meltdown on that guy who was heckling? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there now. This this part's so good. All right. Thanks. And then and then play the part where, <laughs> like, five minutes later, the guy gets back in. All right. All right. All right I'll get now, to it. Um, Ralph, would you replay it? You enjoyed listening. I did because it was like a bit of a train wreck. And like you couldn't, you couldn't hear Artie. At the, the crowd was Mike great. I mean, yeah. Good job on Mike and the crowd. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they forgot the performers. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Later. All right, let's see. Yeah, yeah. what happened was Jim McClure was off to the side of the stage. And he was supposed to tell me exactly when we were going on. Uh -huh. So I looked at him like a half an hour into my set, and he goes, two minutes. So I do another bit. I'm trying to time out what the fuck is two minutes, and, and I, I figure, okay, it's two minutes. I look over at Jim, and he goes, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, Dice Clay uh, gets heckled, and he gets the heckler tossed out. I'm not choking the phone a little. Don't you think she calls you right back? Don't you think that? Did the phone ring, ring? Hello? Did you just hang up on me? Did you just in your fucking ignoramus? But this is you today. This is people today. You'd rather use your phone than bang a chick with a nice fat ass like this. I would never even go. I would never even go with a chick this good looking. You understand? You don't go with a chick this good looking. Because when you come down the block, you know how people look at you? You know, wait, there's one guy, there's one fucking guy, just begging for attention before I continue. Boy, this is a tough crowd. I'm I gotta say, you. and there were guys backstage who owned the place, and I've worked for these guys before. The guy who owns the place is the nicest guy, and he was telling me to go back up there, and I said, dude, <laughs> go you back have, up. I said, dude, you have no idea the comedy gods. You just do not do that. Right. I said, that guy's a legend. What do you yeah. mean? Uh, you mean just walk, walk up in the middle of the set? Oh, set? The, the, the guy was like, the guy was like, hey, you, should, you know, they're yelling for you just to, just to calm him down. He goes, he wants you to go, down. well, calm down and listen to Dice. I said, dude, you have no idea. First of all, if there was a comedy mafia that have a hit on me for mm. doing that, that's just disrespectful. Although, if somebody paid to see Dice, why are they uh, talking really? through the whole thing? That's the thing. Like, I explained to them. I said, look, guys, you knew that I was opening. You knew no. I was set on the air. 
Yeah, clearly. <laughs> I'm doing 20 minutes to a half an hour, which I ended up doing longer because McClure kept with the two minutes. What was, what was Dice like when he came off stage, or were you gone already? Uh, no. Well, what happened was how he ended it was, and, he th and again, I think this is all funny, part of the persona. He has his 16-year-old son, Max, bring up another leather jacket. Yeah. He has a leather jacket, and he goes, Max. And his, his kid brings up a studded leather jacket <laughs> with all diamonds, and the sleeves are cut off. And then he goes into the, the nursery rhymes. So oh. he does four of the nursery rhymes in a row. That's how he ends, and people seem to like that. But still, the crowd was just a hostile mess me, in the middle. Me, let's, and he was fine. You know, again, the VH1 cameras were on, so he came over to me. He said, good job. I think that was great. It was... Let's go play Giant Stadium. Uh, yeah. I mean, God bless the guy. He, he thinks we're playing Giant Stadium, and I'm, I would love to. It would be great. Uh, so here the heckler gets tossed out. We're still working toward yeah. that. Okay. This fucking guy. This fucking drunken asshole. You dumb fuck. Yeah, you cocksucker face. How about I come down there and knock the fucking shit out of you? Yeah. How would you like that? There you you go. fat little beast motherfucker. This is how funny I'll bend you over. I'll paint tits on your back, you fat fuck. <laughs> You'll be my bitch, asshole face. Yeah, cocksucker face. I'm talking to you. You dumb fuck. Bend over. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bend over. Yeah, you're the part of the cum that dripped down your mother's leg. How's this sound? I fucked your mother in the ass and she had you, fatso. That's what I think of you. You oversized fucking cow. You slob. You fucking prick. Get the fuck out of here. Get him the fuck out of here. Go ahead, fatso. Go ahead, you fucking zero of a human being. Get him the fuck out of here now. You know, it would have been a cool show if he just threw out the whole audience. The guy's, call, the guy's calling a zero. It was depressing because the guy looked exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the other thing was one guy got so close to the stage... They almost had a. There was almost a physical altercation, and uh, <laughs> that would have been good. And what happened was, when Dice got backstage, I said, "Dice, if that guy hit you, will you?" He goes, "Yeah, I would have hit him," but he had to wait for the guy to hit him. That'd be a right. good show. Be like, you know, this is what you, you know. hear. You hear. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Dice even said, "He goes, I don't know what the fuck this sounds like on, on oh, radio." Man. Live from New Hampshire. But he would have hit this guy. He would have hit this guy. I'm, I'm getting. I hope VH1 shows all of that, and they don't pussy out and like. It's make a half. Sense. It's a half hour. Th I mean, but you know what? If you ever thought about doing a reality show, man, it is such a pain in the ass. There's a guy with a boom mic <laughs> <laughs> around him all the time. Oh. Uh like, he comes up to me saying hi to me. Now, you don't know, are we on? Are we acting? Are we just having a conversation? Right. Is he provoking you know, like a conversation yeah, I don't know. Does he want something here for the camera? Yeah. And then I signed eight releases. God knows I probably owe them money. Yeah. <laughs> They're not here for you. They're here for dice. You dumb fuck. Goodbye. You fucking prick. Go ahead. Like a fucking three-year-old, they got to throw you out of here. Cause you got too drunk, he's drooling on himself. Go home, let mommy jerk you off in the bathtub. <laughs> There's fucking zero of a human being. <laughs> Mommy's waiting for you, go ahead. Go ahead, baby boy, she'll suck your dick. Fucking creep. That's what I do. That's the dice you want. That's the dice you get. <laughs> no, I don't seem to like that. Uh, uh, right, this one, crowd gets bored again. Uh-oh. Jesus. Oh, oh hey, but when I'm fucking, what do you think? Fat girls don't have balls? They look at you, eat my pussy. Eat my pussy. Girls, let me tell you something about your little pussies, okay? Let me tell you how good you're little. Let me tell you, no matter how you prepare these things, no matter how you shower them off, Whatever you spray on them to disinfect them with with Lysol and Raid, D40, off. By the time we go down there, it smells like a foot that's been in a shoe for 12 fucking hours. Wow. Tough crowd. It, uh, again. What did they come out for, this crowd? <laughs> <laughs> for Artie, I guess. That is a weird, you know, like you want to have a miserable time on a Saturday night and you're willing to pay. <laughs> I play again. I've played the room before, and if they're not hostile, it's a great bunch of people. <laughs> Eat my fucking pussy! And today, today these chicks they shave it down to street level. 
I like them big hairy bastards that do hang on their fucking panties like bows on a clown. And I ride in the room holding her by the love handles. You know, the ones on the side of her fucking neck. Eat my fucking pussy. Now you gotta go down there and make a production number out of it. Gotta make noises from... Should I bring a rattle too? <laughs> find my G spot. That thing over there. Work in your hand. I can't find the the A and a half spot. I gotta find your fucking G spot. Eat your own fucking pussy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Chew on this fucking thing. You don't see the <laughs> crowd's going berserk. <laughs> you know, they're at another show. And He's also, also the amount of alcohol consumption. Wow. I can't even tell you. I mean, there's a bu- there's like eight bars all over the place. So there's two thousand people getting up drinking, doing shots. Fucking <laughs> the guys in the front row use the stage as a bar. But and you know what it is? When a lot of fans get together, there you, you it's a almost, party. You almost don't need a comedian. You could just sit there and network and talk and drink and like meet people. A lot of these gigs at rock clubs, I do just become like the host of a party. I'm right. like, oh, what do you want to say? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's back. His asshole face back. Uh oh. This is I, this is what Ralph's talking about. I think the guy got back in. Somehow he got back in. <laughs> this fucking cocksucker got back. Where the fuck is this guy? <laughs> oh fuck this. Uh, where's the jacket, man? Right here's for the jacket for the palms. Yeah. I wasn't gonna do it. I don't do it no more. You know what? Max. Does the son look like him, or does he look like the mom? Uh, his son is a is 16 years old. He's like real thin. Yeah. He's like he's a good looking kid. He's got yeah. a you know, nice guy, nice kid too. Really, yeah. really nice kid. Springs up the jacket. Yeah, it's which, a special dice nursery rhyme jacket. Right. I think once the guy got back in, he said, "Ah, oh, fuck this. Give me the jacket <laughs> to end it." But uh, Max had to bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So does he win the crowd back with the nursery rhyme? And they seem to like yeah. the nursery rhymes. Yeah. I normally don't do this no more. <laughs> but in light of this craziness, because <laughs> they all know the nurse, that's the good thing. They all know the nursery rhyme, so they 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 do it along with them. Muffin sat on a coffin. Eat it. A curds of way. Long came a spidey, sat down beside. He said, hey, what's in the bowl, bitch? Oh! No, they like that. I don't do it no more. Maybe you ought to do it more. <laughs> Seem well, to like I mean, it. That's only five minutes. Oh, man. So, uh... You were part of a reality show. Name what you do. You went out drinking with Ross. Then we we stayed in Boston. It's a forty five minute drive to Boston without traffic. This uh, motherfucker Ross can drink. He I think he can drink more than you. We went out. Really? We oh went out God. to this and place like like a child. He could stay up till four in the morning. First even, of all, we, still we, still I don't even know how it's possible. Because on the way back. You know, after after performing, I was sweating a little bit. On the way back, we had rooms at the Ritz Carlton in Boston. We had gorgeous rooms. And I was like, I don't know, part of me wants to just maybe get room service and go to sleep. And Ross is like, nah, you're going out, you know. And uh, and Ross is fun to hang out with. So well, I'm like, great. Let's, let, let, yeah, let's go out. So um, this guy who Ross uh, knows through Sirius in the NFL, he works for the Patriots. Real nice kid, this kid Will. He's hooked up in town. So we went to this uh, place, Mantra. And I got to give this place Mantra credit. I have never seen seen hotter chicks in my life. So what happened? New York, Did you get any chicks? New York, L.A. No, no, I didn't. Nothing. New Anybody, York. Any of the chicks know you? Know who you are? Oh, God, yeah. So, and, yeah. And you can't get anything going? But they're all with boyfriends. Oh. So it's hot chicks with boyfriends. Most of them. Oh, but, that's good. But uh, they have these chicks dancing on blocks. They're just dancing right in front of you on blocks. There's one chick with... I never saw a body... You just want to put your penis inside of her. And I'm standing a foot from her just looking at her, and she's dancing. I'm Can like, you jerk off? I'm like, I wonder if this broad mind <laughs> Can you masturbate while they're dancing? And then, but there was a group of Indian kids right next to me who, who recognized me, and they keep going, uh, Hey, hey you know, thinking, Yeah, you're the guy from the movie. 
It's like, yeah, whatever. Great. What movie? What that, are they talking I'm about? I'm like, I don't know. I go, there's a lot of shit selections you could be talking about. Hey, look. He goes, hey, He's me. like us. He sits and doesn't dance with any girls. Right. He's king of the shitheads. Then another chick came up to me and said, it's my dream to smoke a joint with you. Yeah. Well. And I go, really? I go, she goes, want to go back to my place yeah. and smoke a joint? And go I went, ahead. yeah. I said, you know, not that of course I kick drugs. I would never smoke a joint with a hot chick. But anyway. Right. Uh, then she goes, yeah, and me and my boyfriend live in this place. Oh, oh, yeah. Her boyfriend's right behind her. I said, you know what, honey? I don't want to go smoke a I'll joint. I'll go with you if your boyfriend stays away. <laughs> I'll go smoke a joint with her and her boyfriend. But, oh, God, was she pretty. And look at these guys. They send their girlfriends up to entice you to be yes. with them. That's yeah, the bait. it's horrible. Yeah. And, oh, that's like bait and switch. That's false advertising. Yeah. You can sue a, him for that. Another smoking hot chick who then t waited till 30 minutes into the conversation mm -hmm. to tell me that her boyfriend's the DJ. Uh, <laughs> fucking bitch. And then I had to take a picture with her boyfriend, the DJ. Oh. And, uh, oh, you know what, I mean, don't tell me this. are having no luck at all. You should go up to a girl and say, before we start, do you have a boyfriend? Yeah, sign this document. <laughs> you, know how, you know how DICE is everyone signing documents? Yeah. You should have a document. <laughs> and it's funny, the other kid, our friend, he, he's a younger guy, he's 26 years old, and he was just all about finding chicks. And Ross was being a very good boy. He was just drinking, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, both of us were like just, I mean, he wasn't doing you anything wrong. You were good because nobody would be bad with you. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Two choir boys, yeah. And and, uh, yeah, we're choir boys. <laughs> and so I stepped up to drinking a little bit. I started doing shot. Like, a anyone who wanted to buy me a shot, I finally just said, fuck it, give me a shot. Wow. And, uh, I, never, I never saw a Jew drink as much as Ross. <laughs> How can he be a Jew? I mean, he's like a derelict. <laughs> I mean, the fucking he's not guy. He's a derelict. We just I a said he's time. like a derelict. Oh, okay. I never saw a Jew drink that much. He's, really? He's yeah. Not I down have. a bit, huh? Jews are supposed to. The Jews have one bottle of whiskey in their, in their in their liquor cabinet, and it's there for the rest of their lives. I've, oh wait, that guy was Italian. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but we we ended up just uh, we just stepped up to drink a little right. bit, and we were back. I I got back to my room by like 1 a.m. That's why Ross is fun. Yeah, he's a, he, he, we had a good time. But again, the music was so horrible. Like, you know the top five songs? Uh-huh, that's what they play. Times 50, awful, oh. god-awful. I don't know what they're playing. Because it's dance music, Artie. You don't right. go to a club and listen to Bruce Springsteen. You can't right. dance to Why Bruce not? I, oh, used to, I used to go to clubs and they would play, I don't know, like a uh, disco dance version music. of music. They play Howard, the, I can't, can't I, for the music. Listen. What? You're not there for the music. Yeah. No, well, that's how hot the chicks were. The music was so bad. The chicks were so hot. I said, I can deal with this music. <laughs> no, the, the music makes the hot chicks dance and get Dude, up and you take have their been shit a, off. When's the last time you were at a club like this? Uh, the music is ago. so bad. I'm not talking about, like, in the old days, I don't know, Dan Soteria, the underground in New York City that was livable. This is unlistenable, right. some sort of Latin, like, no. African yell. Like, this... <laughs> 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 I mean, if you're not on ecstasy, well, I was I was looking around for ecstasy. I said, listen, give me a five, take whatever you pill if you didn't will get me to stop listening to If me. you didn't abuse drugs so much, you could have been on a little ecstasy. You, you, well, fuck it. Whether I abuse it or not, I, 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 I had enough booze in me to start going, hey, anybody got any, what, are you, what are you holding there, pal? <laughs> I was looking over the Indian guy. Listen, you got any funny you got anything? anything? I was like Bigfoot. I said, you got any of that happy smoke? <laughs> what is it, Ralph? You're looking for crack. But uh, this place, Mantra, awful music, great looking. You want to see the best looking women you've ever seen in your life, go to Mantra in Boston. Yeah, right. Uh, I think Dice is right. I think you guys should play arenas because I want to hear 50,000 people boo Dice. Oh! oh. No, nah, they, were, they, 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 they weren't. They weren't all booing them. The tape is a bad... Uh, yeah. they well, if you want to hear the actual show, we're going to repeat it Wednesday night at midnight. So uh, enjoy and uh, go listen for yourself and uh, and see what happens. It really is fun to listen to. Dice had never played this venue. And again, it's hard telling a guy who you know, has had that success in his life. I had played this venue. I begged him. I said, this is not the place to do this. It just isn't, you know. <laughs> Lisa G., what did you... Uh, you you didn't get any news, so go ahead, Lisa. Uh, Artie's the house music. That's so funny. We have news <laughs> about Forget Artie. It. Page 69, our gossip preview with uh, What have they Kaplan. turned up? Was I overeating somewhere? And Will Murray, apparently a stern staffer gave Artie a brochure of attending a fat camp. <gasps> yeah, really? I heard about um, that. Oh, you did? Yeah, I heard oh, about that. Which and it was somebody funny too who did. I it. mean, what? like I said to Artie, would you like Jason? To I think try and go camp. jogging with me. You know, I think that's a, a nice way was of getting. Was it Penny Crone or somebody? It was somebody no. funny who offered it? Oh, Steve you Langford? did? No, no. I heard it was Jason. Oh, it's Jason. Who? It's Robin's assistant. All right, Terry. Oh, oh that's that's right. Right. Terry. Terry. Terry went. That's right. Carrie went to some camp or something when she was young, I guess. She told me about, and it, she had a fancy name for it, a politically correct name for a fat camp. It was like a, I don't know, like an eating disorder village or something. <laughs> 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 
Why do you give yeah. that to someone? And I said, uh, well, listen, well, knows. I mean, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, I, I don't know where you're working there, Lise, but I, yeah, we're pretty honest with each other. I think other. that was very nice of her. Look, no. I said to Why, her. Why, do you think that's not nice? That's nice. Now he played the cat sound again. <laughs> Whatever I say, something. No, no I, I, it's, it's well, not. I'm just wondering what your relationship is with this person. Do you hang out with her? Is she? A oh, I like Carrie. Yeah, me and no, Carrie I mean, actually. You, you, you two have words, and you know, you hang out or whatever. Because well, it's kind of odd for just somebody you see in the hall to hang. Out. <laughs> Like, no, we were a double play combination in softball. <laughs> and uh, uh, no, we're friendly. She was, it was not insulting in any way. It was funny. It was funny. wow. And Jerry, I might, I to, might uh, go. Do you want to uh, defend your decision to give Artie Fat Camp information? <laughs> Which wasn't a bad one, by the way. Yeah, I mean, how could I argue with somebody doing that? She's looking out for my better interest. Hi, uh, no. It, what happened was um, I was going to a conversation. It had to do with the uh, whole weight loss thing that we were talking about. <laughs> and um, what happened was I said, oh yeah, you know. I'm actually trying to lose weight myself, and uh, you know, I lost uh, about 10 pounds um, several months ago when I went up to this place in upstate New York on this great juicing program, and you might want to check it out. That's mm -hmm. all. It was kind of like Oh, yeah, a, he'll go. Yeah, juicing program is right up Hardy's alley. You're barking right up the right tree. <laughs> what is that juice is Jack Daniels. Uh, Dan, uh, and Dan. Dan Caprio, I'm going to a juicing program. Uh, she would hate Honey, that. Honey, I don't want you on steroids. No, 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 natural, organic juice. She would hate that. Is Grandma Caprio no, becoming right. dice? Uh, that's you. Uh, uh, that's you. Know, am I becoming dice? You're becoming dice. Hardy. Please, uh, you say you're going to this camp. Stay away from the Jews. I'd warn you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I said juice, not Jews. The Jews want your money. <laughs> the Jews, uh, they, are, they are taking your money, Artie. I told you, they're taking your money. You do now become a Jew. No, Artie, the Jews were in camps in World War II. Yeah. All right, anything else, Lisa, that you're we'll covering? a whole bunch more all day long. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. I wish we could get Dice All on the phone. All news, huh? Who is it, that girl who wants to send you to Jews camp? <laughs> <laughs> I said to my auntie, you eat the risotto tiramisu sandwich. A risotto tiramisu? <laughs> that's right. That, that's what I make. That's how we gain the 500,000 pounds. you put that in bread? <laughs> bread, the tiramisu, and the risotto. <laughs> All for my auntie. Oh, forget today. it. You talk about carbs? You talk about carbs? We used to eat gnocchi with bread. <laughs> Camp, yeah. juice camp. And melted mozzarella on Yorkie with bread. <laughs> Good. Uh, we should, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, speaking of Italian food, you know who I have to roast tomorrow is Mario Batale. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's coming out. Uh, uh, that'll be easy. Uh, uh, Craig, you're on the air in Boston. Howard, hey now. Hey now. How are you? Hey now. I was at the show. <laughs> Were you the guy who got back in? No, no. I, I just watched the train wreck, and Artie, you're being way too nice to dice. Uh, well. Way too nice. It didn't go well. It did not go well. I paid 50 bucks myself to go to the show to see Artie. I wanted to see the wreck that was going to be dice, but I went to see Artie. All right, so you were an Artie fan. You weren't a dice fan. Of course. I used to be a dice fan, you know, like in 91, but uh, he doesn't have it anymore. Wow. It was okay, all the things yeah, that he's used to doing, and it was, you know, ended it with rhymes and a fetal attempt to save himself. All right, well, I, a I'm fetal sorry. Attempt. I appreciate you coming out and the <laughs> nice word. The other thing is, there's also 21 year old kids there. Right. Who, all right, uh, Artie, you know. it didn't go well, that's all. all you right. don't have to, you don't have to, you're not the. Look, it uh, wasn't your idea to right. go live. That's right. You said no. <laughs> all right, hey, thanks. Thanks hey, for the call. Can I ask Artie a question, Artie? Sure, sure, buddy. Did you, uh, how'd you get down to Boston, Artie? I drove. Did you go in a limo? I did not, no. Oh, okay. I, uh, my you buddy... You were in Ross's car, right? They, no, uh, they, ra they arranged an SUV to take us. All right. We followed the black limo down there. I thought it was you. That was probably Dice. He had, I had an SUV. <laughs> oh, just to show you how big of a guy Dice was, if it was him, the limo guy stopped to get gas with him in the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, thanks. Thanks, Artie. Thanks for coming out, Craig. Thanks. Yeah. We were going to put the Audi in a limo, but we couldn't fit him in there. You can't, can't fit into a regular limo. <laughs> Sounds like a fun night. I, I can certainly fit into a regular limo. Ah, that's your grandmother. Stop for those calls. Oh, man. It, was, it actually wasn't a bad night. It sounds like fun. i got to take a break. We just go on and on and on, don't we? I have so many things to get to. But, um, all right, let me take this break, and then here's what I'm going to get to. 
I'll give you a little preview of what I'm going to get to. Uh, Richard Denzel made a new phony phone call using Mike Walker cut-up tapes. It's a uh. scream. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to play you Jim Nance, uh, Hawk and a Louie, we think. I can.